Every Father's Day, we send my wife's dad steaks, and he goes through the roof. Anything, I mean, look, this is what's beautiful about steaks. They're definitely not a tie. They let you know they're thinking about you as the dad. With Father's Day right around the corner, what do you give the man who has everything? Well, Father's Day experts at Omaha Steaks have made it easy to put a smile on the big guy's face this summer with hand-selected packages. Head over to omahasteaks.com, use the promo code BIRD at checkout to get $30 off your qualifying order. Packages can include fork tender, bacon wrap filet mignons they are so freaking good or other gourmet growables like air chilled boneless chicken breasts burgers jumbo franks i stand by this their jumbo franks are the best hot dogs i've ever had in my entire life and many more don't forget to save room for dessert most pack gift packages come with four delicious caramel apple tartlets oh my god I'm going to have, a, I'm gonna have, a, have to have a glass of milk after this. Check out other hand-selected packages that are guaranteed to make Dad's Day. Because if there's one thing we know, it's that dads want steak. Whether he's your father, father-in-law, or father figure, he's the guy who was always ready to step up when you needed him the most. This Father's Day, show him love with the only gift that is as unforgettable as he is. The mouthwatering perfection of Omaha steaks. From perfectly aged, oh so tender steaks to hand selected gift packages, Omaha steaks makes it easy to give dad what he really wants. Order today and get $30 off with the promo code BERT. And every purchase is backed by their unconditional money back guarantee. Minimum order may be required. See site for details. I said to someone, they go, what are your expectations for the machine opening day weekend? And I was saying on press, 152 million opening day weekend. So I said, you want it to be bigger than Top Gun Maverick? <laughs> and I went, is that how big that is? And they're like, it didn't, it made 120 million. And I went, whoa. This is going to be huge then. <sighs> Holy shit, 150. That's, that's record breaking numbers. <laughs> wow. I, I had no it. idea the machine was going to be that big. <laughs> I think it's the fun thing about my career is that people think that I'm just an alcoholic, mm -hmm. and then and then they see me that I work every day. Yeah, no. So like, I thought you were an alcoholic too, and then like when we did the movie, I was like, I, oh, he's like, not like addicted to drinking. He just likes to drink. Yeah, yeah. I don't need to wake up and drink. Right. I just like to have drinks. Did I, I did I ever tell you that you posted a <laughs> fuck? You posted a uh, a video one time, and I think this was before we did the movie. And um, it was, I didn't know what these things were. I thought these were like seltzers or something. Oh, for And you real? had like five of these next to your bed. And you were like making a video Liquid where you were like, hey, what's up, guys? And I was like, oh, fuck. <laughs> he's, he's got these next to his bed. I was like, the dude is sucking down like six tall boys I, I in pull, the morning. I drink them pretty fast. Too. <laughs> <laughs> there were like six empty ones and you were drinking one. And like making a video in the morning, and I was like, "Oh man, I knew we like to drink, but that is fucked up." Yeah, no, I, uh, yeah, I just like to have drinks. I like, to, I like, to, I, I, my my real addiction is being social. I want people around me. Yeah, I want people around me all the time. I don't want. That's what I love about this house. I wake up, I come here, and everyone's here. And yeah, then, <laughs> and it's like camp. You get that moment where you're like. You're like, hey, how's, hey, how did everyone sleep last night, you know? Yeah, like, I was never the guy that went to sleep first at sleepovers. Oh, my God. And I, I think fucking... that carries on to what you're talking about, where you don't like to, you don't want to be the first one to go to sleep. Dude, that's why I love a tour bus. Oh, tour nice. bus is the best. Yeah. When you wake up in the morning, especially after you, everyone's been partying, and you wake up in the morning, and you <clears> had one joke that you went to bed with, and then you hear a curtain open, and someone starts that joke all over again. And then everyone's like, hey, where are we going to breakfast? And you're like, oh. Oh, oh. oh that question. I love that question. I love a diner. Oh. If I can find a diner, like I'm about to go shoot for two months. As long as I can find a diner. You got a good town, group you're shooting with, though. I just yeah. saw. I just saw. Well, I know the one I saw is I fucking love this lady. Leanne Morgan. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. She's playing uh, like my fiance's mom or something. I believe. She is the. But you're going to fall in love with her. Like she'll. She'll. The first time she talks to you, you're going to go, oh, I can listen to her talk all day I long. I think I met her at a table read. <clears throat> really? We did a table read for the movie. And then, like, what movie is it? It's called uh, You're Cordially Invited. Um, 
it's it's uh, Will Ferrell, Reese Witherspoon, uh, Geraldine Viswanathan, Nathan, and Meredith Hagner, uh, and then Leanne Morgan as well. Leanne Morgan and you, and then there's like a couple other people that I recognize that were just that were in it. Yeah, I'm not sure. I don't know the full cast. Uh, yeah, I don't know the full cast, but it's, it's, that, it's a good group. Have, have and then gotten... it's like Nick Stoller is the writer and director. He did like, uh, like Forgetting Sarah Marshall, Get Him to the Greek, oh, wow. uh, Neighbors. Neighbors is a big movie. Yeah. Did 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 you um do you are you used to that yet? Like of the like I'm going somewhere for two months. Yeah, I kind of like it. Yeah. Yeah, I, I I like going to. Like I like going to a new place and just being there and not not like stopping by for like. A little bit but like actually like living in a in a random ass place that you would have never otherwise gone yeah and just like fully immersing in like the energy there and like the local vibes i find a diner that i like and then like i'll bring my apple tv so when i'm bored i'll just watch whatever i can't do that i can't watch it really Uh, yeah I, i lost i lost the ability to watch uh television I think I, it, it makes me feel like I'm wasting my life. Diagnosed? Yeah, yeah. I diagnosed. It, it's been diagnosed. <laughs> I went to a doctor and everything. He put on a show and he was like, this is Sopranos. And I was like, pass. You can't watch Sopranos? I've never seen it. Dude, I watched it for the first time during the pandemic. And that's pretty late. That's pretty late. Is pretty it good? late. But it's fucking, it's really, it's it's funny. No. It's like a comedy show. For real? About sensitive mafia guys. Sweet. They'd be like, yeah, he disrespected me. He stepped on my shoe and let's fucking kill his family, you know? <laughs> but I've never saw, seen Sopranos. I've never seen any of the bingeable shit. I've never seen that. Still don't listen to Drake. I don't know Drake. Hmm. That's like the big one. Not listening to Drake? Oh, Drake is But you're the... like familiar with Drake. Like if you nope. heard a Drake song, you'd be nope. like, that's Drake. I keep waiting. It, I, I look at Drake and I think he'd be like, <clears throat> oh, baby. I'm gonna rub you down. I mean, that's not like that's not that far off. For I, real? I don't know if he says I want to rub you down, but like, you had it with Oh Baby. Oh, you- <laughs> <laughs> do you remember when you told me that I was a fan of Migos? Yeah, you were. You are a big fan of Migos. And I was like, you were, you were playing. I was playing all this like good music, and you're like, this is all shit. And then I put on some Migos, and you're like, this. That's what. That was the disconnect. Is that like that's when like I think a lot of guys think they could fuck younger chicks until they hang out with a younger person. And then they're like, you've never seen Ace Ventura, you know? Right, right. And then they go, oh, all our fucking, oh, we do not connect at all. Yeah. Because I remember we were listening to your music and Aunt, my cousin Andrew was with us. And I was like, I was like, man, I don't like any of Jimmy's songs. He's like, yeah, he's also 20 years younger than you. And I went, and I went, so? And he's like, <laughs> he's like, dude, all the shit you listen to, just his parents listen to. And I was like, fuck. And then you turn on Migos, and I had always said I didn't like Migos. I fucking love Migos. You can't really not enjoy Migos. You know who Shane Gillis is? I know the name. He's a comedian. You'd love him. You'd fucking love him. He, we did a, we did shows at, uh, in, um, so I fuck, where were we? Where, where it was for the Super Bowl, and Drake was having a party, and his, I mean, I've never seen someone care so much about going to a fucking party. He's like, it's Drake, dude. It's Drake. Mm-hmm. And I was like, yeah, he doesn't. I can't imagine dating a chick who was like, we have to go to the Drake party. I'd be like, I miss Leanne. Yeah. I, I miss an old lady who goes, who's Drake? Yeah. I ain't never seen no Drake. What? How cool is your life, though? I, I watch you on Instagram. You've been everywhere this past year. Yeah. I, this past year, I've I've traveled to some cool places. I, I mean, everywhere. Every time I go on Instagram, you were like, I feel like you were in cons. You were in. Yeah, I was in con like a year ago. We went to we went to Can, and then we went to um, uh, we went to like Monaco for the Grand Prix, and then we went to the Maldives, and then the Antarctica trip was crazy. Yeah, what, what, you went to Antarctica. That was the craziest thing I've ever done in my so life. Wait, where did you guys leave from? We left from. We met up with everyone in Argentina, and then we flew. I mean, that's a trip. What? Yeah, that, I mean, that's, that's a trip. That's a trip. But it wasn't. That was just where we met up. So you just flew from L.A. to Argent- to Argentina, and then we went to Chile, and then you get on, like, a special airplane that can land on ice, and then we flew to Antarctica, and then we got to... Uh, Wait, are you nervous King, at all? King George. Oh, yeah. I was like, are we good? Because they're giving you all this, they like a list of gear that you need, but it was summertime there, so it wasn't like 
negative 60. It was like zero. It was just cold as fuck. Zero, it was cold as fuck. It's like it was Michigan like, in, in the it was winter. It's like zero to, zero to 20. So there were times when I'm outside, you know, just like, and I'm like, this is fine. Yeah. We're going in the water and stuff. We're cold plunging in the water. For real. In Antarctica. And then, you know, we took like a helicopter from the where we landed to the boat. And we were on the boat for like eight days, just cruising around the 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 peninsula. See, I would have a, I would have I would have a fear that I had to entertain the entire time. Yeah, I mean, it was. I didn't know you. You wouldn't have had that on this trip because there were so many people that probably there were so many people like that. That really? it was like a very cool group of people, like like what, just an eclectic group of like yeah. is it actors, musicians, yeah, millionaires? athletes, act like actors, musicians. It was like a wild group of people, um, and there's nobody there. Like <laughs> the captain of the of the of the boat was like, um, he's like, yeah, so um, so and so, like the guy who booked the whole thing was like, he said he doesn't want to see any other ships so we're gonna try to avoid uh seeing anyone which might be tough because it's a high season but we're we're gonna do what we can so we saw two other boats the whole time really (laughs) yeah like there's nobody there we went like heli boarding on a heli boarding yeah you take a helicopter and snowboard some mountain and we just kept lapping it and they were like we're like how many people have done this and they're like probably like 10 like you telling me we're like, <laughs> like we're twenty people that heli board in Antarctica? Does hang on? Does anyone in the boat not know you're not a trust fund kid? Uh, because I mean, like when you get in that scenario, mm-hmm. you assume everyone is from money, and this is like, oh yeah, this is what we do. Uh, and you are not that person. Yeah. I was definitely the, poor, the poorest person on the boat. <laughs> Wait, do people know like how regular you are? Um, I don't know. Do, I think does it... that bother you if people know that you're just that you're not that you really aren't you aren't uh, <laughs> fucking who's the kid in Dune? You aren't that guy. You aren't what Timothy Chalamet's yeah, character. You aren't, like I mean, I assume... dude, you know what I think is funny about Dune, by the way? Oh, I could talk about Dune forever. I just saw it, dude. Timothy, Ch- the whole movie of Dune. I saw Dune one. The whole movie is everyone just being like, "Oh my god, that's Timothy Chalamet." <laughs> <laughs> right like yeah. the whole time they're like oh my god he's so fucking hot that's timothy chalamet you know you know kale was in in post-production when we were shooting the machine oh on, and he on was dune? Get, on dune he was getting cuts the entire time and he's oh, like, dune one or two do one do two he's doing two dune two right now he's finishing it up right now dune one you know dune one was like yo how much did Z- zendaya get paid because she didn't even have to read a script yeah she would was she even in it i don't even remember she's in the end she's in the, she's in dream sequences oh right 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 but you the whole time you're like it's zendaya with blue eyes motherfucker right and then this new one's timothy chalamet with blue eyes i peter my assistant is like a like i mean it in the best way but like a nerd uh-huh. and so he loves like fantasy stuff yeah and i mean so, i like i do too i just felt like dune was like the whole movie felt like the first act I, I was like, it's all like an intro. I was very confused. Well, I could have used uh, a little more lighting. <laughs> it was dark as fucking shit. And the whole time I'm going, who is this? Are we supposed to not see it? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, it's intentional. Could they name one group of family, the Smiths? So I can, because I'm bad with <laughs> names. So when they're like the Vandarians. What is like the, the, Atre- the Atreides? Atreides. Atreides. And the Vandar- the Valor- Valorian Bladens. Yeah. And, and then they, the name of the Steels. Some, it's, it's, it's so Game of Thrones. The whole movie, though. If, if you I had, got, after that movie, I was like, I get the Timothy Chalamet thing now. I oh, understand it. I do, too. I mean, I was just like, yeah. Have you I, met him? No, I haven't met him. But I mean, I saw that movie and I was like, like I mean, the whole movie, like I said, it's just everyone being like, whoa. What's crazy? See what was that, if t- Timothy Chalamet, because like you are, you're accessible, you're approachable mm-hmm. in life. Mm-hmm. You've always, always have been, but like Timothy Chalamet gives off a vibe of like, ooh, don't talk to him. Mm-hmm. But like, I wonder if he's like a regular person. Where's he from? Like, what is it? What did his dad do? That's gotta be. <laughs> His dad's got it with the name like Chalamet. You can't like you can't you can't be a normal. His mom. You didn't, you didn't just you didn't grow up in Venice with a name oh, like Chalamet. His dad was a French writer and editor, current, working for the United Nations. Yeah, of course. Okay, that guy's been on yachts, to Antarctica. <laughs> he grew up on yachts, to Antarctica. But but like that's the thing that I that I can I always have. I don't know, and I especially have it right fucking now. 
uh, is imposter syndrome, where mm-hmm. I feel like I don't. I'm, I feel like I snuck my way into a party, and everyone's going to find out that I don't belong there, and then I'm not like mm-hmm. I'm not like I don't really like I may have money, but I'm not I'm not I don't deserve to have money. Mm-hmm. Like I like, but when, every time I see these trips, I know you're a regular person. Yeah. Like, and so I always keep I always wonder like, does that ever? Do you like when you're on these fucking crazy adventures? Like, like I don't, I, I don't know what I can and can't say with you because I'm really bad at secrets. So I don't know, like, like your your list of friends is so in in like extensively, authentically diverse and kind of Illuminati. Like, like you, it, it's it's that I go that I go, but it's, he is ultimately at the end of the day, and your girlfriend knows this. He is just Jimmy. Yeah. I mean, I don't, I don't know if I get like um, imposter syndrome, but I get like when I'm in those crazy situations. Sometimes I'll just kind of like zoom out for a second and be like, "This is fucking crazy." (laughs) And sometimes I'm in these situations, and that's really all I can say for like a couple hours. Like, this is fucking crazy, you know. And but like, usually everyone can acknowledge the craziness of situations and if they can't then maybe we're not really on the same page you know like if yeah. i'm doing a crazy you know yacht somewhere and you're like this is crazy huh someone's like what do you mean i'm like okay maybe i'll i'm gonna lean over this way and say that's crazy <laughs> and see if, <laughs> see if this person also agrees that it's crazy do you think you would ever be a guy that's impressed by like so there is a part that's like there's celebrities I want like I never give a fuck about acting. I never give a fuck about acting. Mm-hmm. I, I didn't want to be an actor and I didn't want to be in movies. And I and I said shitty things about actors to my daughter who <laughs> wanted to be an actor. Okay. And then I acted and I went, oh, that was pretty interesting. Well, but also your experience with acting was very free of the parts of acting that suck. Okay, what sucks about it? Because you came in. As the star of the movie. Yeah. And it was like the Burt show. <laughs> Usually as an actor, you got to deal with being shitted on. For real? And, and feeling like you thought you were that guy. Yeah. And then not being that guy for a long time before you can be that guy. And that part of it, I don't oh. think you would like at all. So Kale told me. He goes, I can see where you'd be problematic on a movie. Right. I said, really? And he goes, I think you just want to be the star of movies. You're, you, you're, you'd you be good at being the star of movies. <laughs> but if, if they're like, Bert, we need you out here for a month and a half. You're in four scenes. We're just not sure when they're going to be. So we'd like you to stay here the whole time. Uh-uh. You'd say, I think I'm done acting. I'm done acting. Like, I wasn't the kind of actor who couldn't be, like, showered with accolades after the scene. Like I like to, I need... you weren't the kind of, you <laughs> you you weren't the kind of actor who couldn't be showered. With right, actors. right, right. I needed you. You, you were open to it. I know. <laughs> I was open to it. You were open to the scene ending and everyone just going, "Let's give it up for Bert." Fucking Bert <laughs> killed it. I need to hear that. I right. need to hear that. But I, like Rodney Dangerfield was like that. So when they did Caddyshack, he did the first take and no one was laughing, and they went. And cut, and he goes, I'm bombing over here. <laughs> and they're like, no, it's a movie set. We can't laugh or ruin the take. And he's like, ah, it's silent. I've fucking never done silence before. And so then they said, all right, everyone just laugh on this next take and give him his confidence back. And so they all laughed out loud, ruined the take. And Ronnie's like, now we got it. Because That's there's, funny. A, there's a weird part of like, I think I just have a comics brain. Mm-hmm. Like I, like I, I but, but what's interesting is... When we got done the movie, I went, oh, I can understand. I was like, oh, okay, I want to work with, I want to work with Jonah Hill. Like, I would love to watch him work. He's, I worked with Jonah Hill, and he's like the most talented improv actor I've ever experienced in person. Really? It was like intimidating as fuck because he would say things that were funnier than the script every time that I didn't know were coming. It was like my second movie, you know, I'm like 19 years old. And I'm next to Jonah Hill, who's like a legend. What movie was it? 22 Jump Street. And he's just fucking—he's just throwing zingers at me that weren't in the script. And I have like the script memorized. And I was just like, oh, oh. And like, it was such a cool moment because I I realized like how things, how like 
improv works on set. Yeah. And he was just zinging these like one liners at me. And I was just trying to react and not laugh and also navigate being in awe of Jonah Hill just like doing this in front of me. But like to, to your point about that's kind of what made me realize I like doing comedy movies more than serious movies. Yeah. Because in a comedy, even in a show or like a movie, if you kill it, you kind of walk off the set, whether or not they ruin the take, you kind of walk off the set, everyone's like smiling, like that was, that was fucking funny. Yeah. If it's serious and you crush it, people are crying, you know, people are, yeah. and they look at you and they go, and you're like, man, it's like a solemn vibe right now. How? And it's hard to feel like, did I do well? Like I remember on, on one movie or a show where it was, I was not, it was not a funny scene. And I kept like going in the direction and being like, am I like blowing this? And he's like, no, you're doing great. It's just, it's just like not, no one's like, you're not hearing any reactions right now because you're doing well. If they're laughing, you're, it wouldn't be good. Yeah, it must have been a bummer, the rap party for Schindler's List. <laughs> everyone's like, everyone's like, I was, I was good. Yeah, they're like, we, we did a good thing. Yeah, we did a good thing. Patting each other on the back. All right, man, I go ahead. Safe yeah. flight home. Like just like really intense long hugs. Yeah. Just at the end of a day, like, yeah, they killed those people. Yeah. All right, see you guys tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't ever want to work on a serious movie. That would be stupid. I'm just I just had a vision of you being on Schindler's list. Like <laughs> So what's the plan, boys? What are we doing now? And I'm like nah. I could I would have had to I would have had to play a Nazi, I think. <laughs> I don't think I could have given you, like, I don't think I would have had to, like, I, I I can't give you empathetic energy, but I can give you dick, like, frat boy energy. Not that frat boys are Nazis, but, like, there's a there's a correlation. I think there's a closer <laughs> correlation to frat boys being Nazis than, yeah. like, if, 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 if Trump was going to recruit this, why would I fucking talk like this? This is, like, the worst part about me, uh -huh. is I'm st and, I'm, and I'm still going, because I think it's not a bad idea, yeah, but if yeah. you were going to start an army... Frat boys is where you'd start. Right. You'd Very like, right. brainwashable. Already kind of brainwashed. Yeah. If we, this is coming from a fucking legit frat boy. We need to take back this country and it starts on Tuesday nights with nickel beers. And everyone's like, yeah, who wants Monday night free beers? Yeah. But on Wednesday, we need to eliminate the gypsies. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's where it starts. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but he is giving us nickel beers on Tuesdays. Right. Um, yeah, the uh, Frat boys do be chanting stuff. It's and, easy. And then and then like you look back, I look back on some of the things like our our chants and stuff, and I was like, eh. Can I tell you what's crazy? I we had a chant that makes no sense. Uh -huh. I never questioned it making no sense. And then I did it with Guy Fieri, who's in the same fraternity I am, and his chant made less sense. <laughs> and I got frustrated that he wasn't signed on to my no sense champ uh -huh. it was uh ru ra rega for alpha tall mega hip hurrah hip hurrah three cheers for alpha uh, at uh, three cheers for alpha tall oh tall's all yeah and i was and i never understood yeah, the tall's all yeah. what the fuck you just said yeah and and but ru ra rega it's like such a fucking and he did it and he had his uh his was different at the end and i went I never thought that made thematically made sense. Tuzz all yeah. Yeah. And but we said it. My I said it all through college. Like if someone put his hand up one, oh, then immediately that was a, a call to war. <laughs> oh I mean it was like fucking crazy. It's crazy how it's crazy how fun it is. Like how it really pulling out this, I hope this doesn't come as an insult because I love being a fraternity, but like pulling out not all identity. But a lap, like, <laughs> but, but I, I don't know the right way to say it. Do you know what I'm saying, though? I know what you're saying. I was never really like, you I were was in all, for a second and out. I was, I mean, I was there for three years and yeah. I was like, holy shit, this is crazy. Uh, and I started making YouTube videos, kind of like making fun of the whole thing. And then, yeah. uh, and then I dropped out of school junior year. But like, you know, I was, I was, I was in it. Yeah. I was, I lived in the house sophomore year. It was, um, I was in too deep, I would even say. Oh, not as deep as I was. Eep. I was there for six and a half years in my fraternity. 
Okay. So that is, you were in deeper for sure. I was in deeper. You're in deeper. People thought I was in that deep because when I made my first videos, they thought I was a senior, but I was a freshman. So then like the next year already, I'm a sophomore, I'm living in the house and people are like, why are you still here? And I'm like, what? No, I'm a, I'm a, I'm, ni- I'm 19. I'm a sophomore. Yeah. And they'd be like, <laughs> okay, dude. And by the time <laughs> junior year came around, people were like, all right, dude, get out of here. What are you doing? When I joined a fraternity, I remember this is, maybe this is just who I am, mm-hmm. but I remember being like, okay, so there's a way to dress. Do you know what I'm saying? <laughs> that's, a different, that's a difference between you and me. Because I was in the fraternity, and I was like, why the fuck is everybody dressed like this? Everyone, I was like, oh, cool. I don't have to worry about what to, think, what to wear anymore. I was like, cool, you wear an ATO hat, an ATO shirt, a pair of uh, khaki shorts, and flip-flops and or saddle shoes. Oh, my like, God. Saddle shoes and socks is what everyone wore, but I wore flip-flops because I was a flip-flop guy. But, like, that look... Like, I was like, okay, cool. We're done with worrying about what to wear now. Oh, man. Isn't that crazy? That's 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 what's crazy right there, that yeah. one. That's the one. That's where you lost me. I, that's where I loved it. And then <laughs> and then when you get older, you realize... You realize that... You look like a fucking idiot. Yeah, that, you, that you're looking like everyone... Because you're seeing younger guys do it. But then you lean into the frat boy who is ironically a frat boy. Mm-hmm. And that's when then and that's another phase of being a frat boy is that you're like you're like now I wear the crazy outfits. Now I'm crazy guy. Mm-hmm. And but you're not crazy guy cuz real crazy guys in the theater department putting sets uh, together and fucking and 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 dre- and wearing his own little fucking outfits that he's making. Like that's the real like the real but you go into like oh, I'm going to dress like an alligator tonight or I'm wearing you know like it's you know yeah, what I'm saying I mean, like if you I if you go through my like all my college photos like I would say in 60 70% of them there's a costume oh yeah everything was like a costume party which makes for really funny fights <laughs> you know like a halloween fight in college where it's just like I witnessed, and I used to tell this story in, in one of my stand-up routines, where it was about a, a fight I witnessed on Halloween, where it was a frat dude, a group of frat dudes dressed as bumblebees, and not like <laughs> not like manly bumblebees, like yeah. gold tights and like leotards and little antenna, you know? And this dude is like, I walk outside and this dude is like heated, you know, just <laughs> pacing, buzzing back and forth. <laughs> And this, 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 uh, and and he's facing off with a teenage mutant ninja turtle, and these two dudes, and it's like a full on bro off, like outside of this party where like it's heated, you know. But I'm like, dude, you're wearing a fucking, you're in a bumblebee costume, and all of a sudden, one dude swings, the whole squad of ninja turtles. He has a squad, and there's a squad of bumblebees. The bees swarm. Michelangelo and his boys. All hop in, Shut and next thing you know, it's like Spider Man comes in, <laughs> and like, and like you're just watching, like, you're like Woody just got knocked out. Oh, Buzz Lightyear is over there getting his face. Oh shit! Pounded. They knocked out a woman. Oh, never mind. That's a dude dressed as a woman. <laughs> oh, and I was like, this is how can you be serious right now? Oh. This guy, because this guy was so mad, and he's wearing tights and a leotard. But it was, and he's it, like, you fucking say something to me, bro. I'm like, look in the mirror. Oh my god. There was a, but there was like such a fun, like I, I missed the, I missed the, like the hang. Like yeah. that's the part that was the best is like being in the lounge on like a fucking Friday at like one thirty when like everyone's getting done their noon classes. Everyone's coming in to have lunch. Everyone's figuring out what they're doing for the weekend. You have a group that's going, we're going to take mushrooms and go out to fucking raft the, the itch and the knee. You have one group. <laughs> Like going, oh, we're we're throwing a party here. Like it, like I miss the legit hang, and I, and I I don't mean this shitty, but like you can't. We've I, I'm with my fraternity brothers. We've grown so differently as men that I can't recreate it as the way I wish. I can't. I can't go back. I'd hope so. Yeah. I mean, yeah, but not all of them have, and I, and I'd wonder sometimes. Like they still, I'll get a text. Uh, I get a text from a group, and they'll be like, "Hey, we're going golfing." And uh, and I I I don't mean that I've 
I mean, I guess I have changed. You've gone pro. I've gone. I've gone pro with my pro. Yeah, yeah. I've gone pro with my pro. I, but even like with like fraternity, like uh, like comics. Like we went to Mark Norman's bachelor party, and even I think in groups still with comics, there's like a, a weird hierarchy of like you know mm-hmm. younger comics versus older comics and older comics. Like, and so that shows up when you don't want it to. Oddly enough. It, it's always going to show up in things mm. but with those guys i wish i could go back and be i wish i could like take a pill for a weekend and be like oh, i'm back i wish i could say the same but like i just went to my friend's bachelor party the dizzler <laughs> and that was my whole college group of friends and it was like oh wow here we're back yeah but you're like what 20 31 31 yeah, it's easy at 50 it's very different yeah that's true you have that's kids true. in college you have uh pe- 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 i mean at 50 in the, when you turn 50 there are dudes that are hardcore assigned to politics and like and like that's their thing you know like yeah. I, like I, that that just doesn't land on my radar mm-hmm. about like uh, like the bud light fucking commercial why do they care i don't think they went hard enough on what blowing up bud light cans no, because no, they no, were no. like we're fine with gay no, people no i think bud light should have really leaned into the transgender movement and, and had a dude i told this earlier had a dude on the corner of a bed drinking a bud light and his chicks in bed she's like are you gonna do this or not and he's like i'm doing it i'm doing it and he kills bud light and then he turns around and sucks his girlfriend's cock that's the commercial i want to see <laughs> fucking lean into it bud light get some fucking views <laughs> hey can i be in the next your next movie yeah. <laughs> if you keep talking like that <laughs> do you remember do you remember can i tell you christine you're the only one that's going to really appreciate this because you know my i've known christine for, <laughs> for like what a transition that <laughs> was he sucks his dick so let's talk biz jim <laughs> this show is sponsored by better help i was thinking the other day uh i was during the pandemic i did those drive-in shows and after we did the first driving show i realized i was i was making money for everyone that worked on these and it was a time when not everyone was making money and i, and I was like okay that's my goal that's going to make me feel better if I know that I'm getting everyone work. And then by the next thing you know, we did like 60 shows and I was so drained and I, and I thought I was having fun, but I realized I wasn't taking any time for myself. It's so easy to get caught up in what everyone else needs from you and never take a moment to think like, what do I need for myself? I need downtime. I need time off. I need to work out. I need to spend time with my kids. I had just spent all this time at, at the beginning of the pandemic with them. So I figured, Oh, I'll just push hard, push hard. Look, when we spend all of our time giving, it can sometimes leave us stretched uh, thin and feel b- burned out. Therapy can give you the tools to find more balance in your life so you can keep supporting all the other people in your life without leaving yourself behind. I have been in therapy. I was in therapy during the pandemic. I definitely was. I remember doing it in the back of the bus and it felt good. If you're thinking about giving starting therapy or giving therapy a try, Give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, which I swear by. Designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. All you have to do is fill out a brief questionnaire and you get matched with a licensed therapist. And switch therapists at any time for no additional charge. That's the key. Because you're not, sometimes you, the first one you find isn't the best one. And you got to keep going and keep going and keep going. And then you find them and you're like, ah, this is the one. Find more balance in your life with BetterHelp. Visit betterhelp.com slash Bert today to get 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash Bert. I love my mattress. I have a Helix mattress. Helix Sleep is a premium mattress brand that provides tailored mattresses based on your unique sleep preferences. Their lineup includes 14 unique mattresses, including a collection of luxury models, a mattress for big and tall sleepers, even a mattress made for kids. So how are you going to know which mattress works best for you? Very easy. You take the Helix Sleep Quiz, and they find you the perfect mattress in under two minutes, and your personalized mattress is shipped straight to your door free of charge. They know there's no better way to test out a new mattress than by sleeping on it in your own home. That's why they offer a hundred night and a 10 to 15 year warranty to try out your new Helix Sleep mattress. Everyone's unique and everyone sleeps different. That's why Helix has several different mattress models to choose from designed for specific sleep positions and feel preferences. Models with memory foam, Layers to provide optional uh, for relief if you sleep on your side like I do. Those are the mattresses I have. By the way, they're making the mattress for my new bus. I cannot freaking wait. They have models with a more responsive foam to cradle your body for essential support for those stomach and back sleepers, plus enhanced cooling features 
to keep you from overheating at night. We need that one for Leanne. Menopause. And if your spine needs a little extra TLC, they got you. Every Helix mattress has a hybrid design combining individually wrapped steel coils in the base with a premium foam layer on top. It's the perfect combination of comfort and support. I took the sleep quiz and found out, oh, I know I'm a slide sleeper, but I took the sleep quiz and they sent mattresses and I was skeptical at first. And dude, the first night on these mattresses, we, for, we they sent one mattress. We got one mattress, right? For our, our beach house. That was the first one. And the second I slept on it, we every mattress in our house was changed. Every mattress in our house, and now all I sleep is on my Helix Sleep mattress. It legit was so freaking easy to set up. I shot a video of it. I set up my mattress in under two minutes. It took me two minutes to, sleep to, to, to take the sleep quiz. Helix is offering up to 20% off all mattress orders and two free pillows for our listeners. So go to helixsleep.com slash Bert. This is their best offer yet, and it won't last long. With Helix, better sleep starts now. <laughs> I don't know why, but you are such a mirror to me of like how how weird my brain works. <laughs> I remember one time we're we're sitting in our tra- in in under in the tent. Jimmy's shirtless, and he's got a piece of paper in his lip to mimic my lower lip. <laughs> and I said something to the effect of, "If we do, you know, if we do this, how fun would it be if we could do this again?" And he goes, what do you mean? I said, like, if you could, we could do another thing. And Jimmy looks at me and he goes, I, I, I think I might be done playing Bird. <laughs> <laughs> and I said it like for real, like, you know, how cool would it be if you could play Bird for the rest of your life? <laughs> like, I think I'm good. I think, I, I think once is enough for me. And I remember it was, I was being so honest. And my cousin Andrew was there. And in the car, he kept laughing. He goes, do you think everyone just wants to revolve around you for the rest of your life? And I was like, you don't feel that way about yourself? Like, I, I that that moment, and then uh, the other one was, uh, and this is like, I mean, this is like a, a real mirror to how fucking broken I am. We were sitting in the pool one night drinking char- uh, rosé, and you said, can I tell you a secret? Do you remember this? <laughs> yeah. And I said, yeah, of course. And you told me the secret, and I immediately yeah, that was crazy. grabbed my phone and called Kale. And you went, whoa, what are you doing? And I went, I'm telling Kale. You <laughs> yeah, told I was me. like, bro, I told you 20 seconds ago, and I explicitly said, <laughs> don't tell anyone this. But. That's why I'm bad at secrets. I'm, I'm just bad at secrets. Yeah. But I, but I liked, but I think it's it's less. The secret part and more the excitement on the other person's face when you get to tell them something fun. Yeah, I get that. I think the funniest part of that story that we just kind of glazed over that a lot of people would be like horrified by is that we were just drinking wine. We were sitting in the pool with wine glasses. In an ice cold pool. It was yeah, an ice and, cold and drinking rosé. Like, get, get the fuck, get those wine glasses out of the pool. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah. like, if you break a glass, you got to drain the hole. It's a big uh, deal. Did you come back? Did you have to come back for reshoots? No, I didn't even know there were reshoots. No, I thought, no, but like, I think you had to come back to do another scene. I was in there in two pieces. Yeah, I like, yeah, I yeah, came yeah, out yeah, for yeah. like three, two weeks and then uh, for like another three weeks. Oh, you won't be here for the premiere, will you? No, I think I actually will be. Oh, for real? Yeah. I, I got, uh, I think I got that day off or those days off. So I'm going to fly back from Atlanta. And, oh, that's going to be fun. Yeah. That's gonna yeah be I was like bummed if I was going to have to miss that. I definitely want oh, to be so we're putting a, we're doing a lot of like this whole uh, this whole team is doing a lot for it. We you know we you you know how everything shook down, right? Like the writer's strike? No, 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 like the it, the movie was on the shelf. Oh yeah, yeah. And then, and, but because I, of the I leaked it on war. Rogan. Yeah, and I leaked it on Rogan and then it and then it and then I think because a lot of that because it got so many views online of just like authentic they were like you leave going like yeah keep yeah keep doing what you want to do and then i was like yeah and then i talked to i well, i talked i texted with someone privately about what how cool a different type of premiere would be and the guy was like he was like let's fucking go what, what do you mean a different type of premiere what do i need to know Turning is there information party, i need to know party like let it make it be like waste management <laughs> Like, I'm, I'm I'm in. Yeah, it's gonna be a fucking blast. Well, I'll, I'm I'm 95 percent sure that I'll be here now. So, um, you know, what are we wearing? Are we matching? <laughs> oh, Jimmy, don't do that to me. <laughs> Can I get you a matching motorcycle? <laughs> are you pulling up on a motorcycle? I think so, yeah. <laughs> no way. <laughs> I think so. 
I think I'm gonna have a police escort from my house through Hollywood. <laughs> I just there's parts of me like I was looking at like uh, Pete Davidson. I don't know. I, I can't. I I love Pete. I I don't ever want to speak negatively of anyone, and so I don't hope this doesn't come off weird. Mm-hmm. But I I love Pete, but I don't have the part of I don't have the humility maybe that Pete has or the. Uh, maybe maybe it's a little bit of, of of mental health stuff, but like he he definitely wants to, he doesn't want strike me as someone who wants to be in the spotlight, despite him being so much in the spotlight. Mm-hmm. He doesn't strike me as someone who wants to be in the spotlight. I think that's the coolest thing about Hollywood. Mm-hmm. Like that's the funnest thing is they let you act like a fool. Yeah, they, they welcome the fucking lunatics. Right. Like I, that's what I like. I I think the sexiest parts of Hollywood is, you know, the is like Jack Nicholson on on courtside, and, and then that becomes a thing. Mm-hmm. And and you know, there's got to be a part of Jack that really loves Lakers, but also loved being the guy. You know what I mean? Yeah, I think I get what you're saying. I think where I'm different in that is like the second I started to have the eyes on me. Mm-hmm. I like kind of ching. I got a little more like um I got a little less outgoing. Was that in college or in college? Like I used to be super like, ah, everyone like telling jokes, like yeah. trying to like make a big splash everywhere I went. And then the second I was famous and people would like like in college, like I would walk in and they'd be looking at me. I started feeling like, ah, ooh. And I and I got like a little more um What's it called when you're like I, a little more introverted. Sh- a little more introverted? Uh, Can I tell you in situa- in public situation than among my friends and you know same same vibe? I, I don't like that I'm this honest because I know that this is gross, but I'll tell you <laughs> when I got famous in college. Uh huh. And I, I I I would I don't know if it was the same fame you had. I was written up in Rolling Stone magazine. Well, I think we had a similar college experience. Yes, I don't think there's many people that have had similar college experiences, but like when I was in college, I started making videos for college kids, like in an era where YouTube videos were not like that big of a thing. It was like me and college humor that made college sketches. Yeah. So I became super famous amongst college kids and I still lived in college and I was making videos about fraternity people and I lived in a fraternity and it was like living, I lived in my demographic and that was like, I was, the most famous I'll ever be in that like time period. Oh yeah, for being like a party guy, especially in the world you're around. Yeah, so, like, you can and live so in, you, you can, were same you can thing. Live, you can live in a. That's a, a really interesting statement. That's a, a really. I don't think I've ever been as famous as I was when that article came out in that surrounding. Right, because, because you're in your demographic. It would be like, you know, if 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 Justin Bieber lived in you know a community with a bunch of like high school girls yeah it, the, the truth is that's a weird analogy maybe uh <laughs> <laughs> maybe let's let's uh wait have you partied with him yet uh no no I mean, cool, I've, met, I've met him I, I would be i would be interested to pick that kid's brain yeah yeah i like well i i you know i'm i was like that with logan paul i really wanted to meet logan and jake paul mm-hmm. because i still want to meet jake but met logan and I was interested to, because you can, as a comedian, you can talk to someone and understand who they are without having to ask them the questions that you need to get to understand who they are. Right. And it was really fascinating to me. The most fascinating thing to me about Logan Paul, this is going to sound like crazy, amazing out loud reader. Amazing what reader? Out loud reader. I'm not a good out loud reader. I don't know if that's what it's called. When you read out loud. Where'd you meet him? Book club? <laughs> What do you mean amazing out loud reader? He just read out loud really well. Really well. Like, really well. Like, his mom must have books around the house when they were kids. <laughs> like, I just, like, I, it was, he was a really good out loud reader. He was a really good out loud reader. Like, I, like, I, like it, it caught me off. It was out of all the things I could tell you about Logan Paul, amazing out, out loud reader. But what was he reading out loud? It doesn't matter. It's just reading out loud, and I just watched it happen, and I went, wow. <laughs> If you, you watch me, I read get out, it now. If you watch Tom Segura read out loud, you'd go. English wasn't his first language. <laughs> he, Tom Segura is such a bad out loud reader that, like, it's comical, 
Like he get and he gets spooked the way like a, a fourth grader would. Mm-hmm. Like you remember? Do you remember the kids in fourth grade who had to read out loud? They'd be like, um, oh yeah, and Boo Radley never yeah. came out. What's that word, man? It was tough. Yeah, yeah, it was I was tough. Bad I was a kid in class, just like, oh my god, just pass it, pass please, it to someone else. Please don't like make me read out loud. And certain certain kids killed it. Like yeah, Mel th- Rudolph. I thrived. No, you were a good out loud reader. Oh yeah, I re- I used to read. I used to read like so many when I was in when I was like twelve, twelve to like from like eight to sixteen. I read one year. I tried to read a hundred books, and I and I got to like seventy, and I and I and I I didn't hit my goal, and I was bumped. Really? Yeah, I was the guy that would like get the. I'd go to the midnight Harry Potter release, and I I'd, I'd crush Harry Potter in like in like. 48 hours so then i'd get to school i would no one would spoil it for me because no one would know shit before i did that's how much i used to care about reading for real yeah what, what was the last book you read recently uh i read i just read the rick rubin book wonderful for real oh yeah because i'm looking for a book like i don't read i uh if you said uh a hundred books in my lifetime not even remotely close i maybe read probably 25 books I read the most recent fiction book I read was called One Q Eight Four, very good. And then I read. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I don't know if you'd like Can that you, one. Why? What is it about? Like it's. I mean, it's good. It's like kind of like a like a like a love story. Mm, pass. Keep going. Um, but it's very well done. And then is uh, it like do people kill people? Japanese? It's no, set no. In Japan? It's uh, uh, it's interesting. I don't know if it's your vibe. Oh, Haruki Maru. Yeah, he's. <laughs> I stopped just short of the hate crime. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but the creative act uh, by Rick Rubin. Did you have to read that for a movie? No, no. I just. Uh, I, why did you have to? Why would you? Why would that? I don't. Rick I can't Rubin I, is just a very. Like, no, no, no. Rick Rubin I get. But I, I, I oh, don't that? know how that would get in front of you. I like. Uh, I just like. I wanted to read a fiction book. I, I, I can only read so many like nonfiction books before I'm just like. I am only nonfiction. So this one. Read that one. Okay. Uh, can someone write that down? Uh, I just bought. He's like a fucking Buddha. He's. If you're like he's a creative amazing. or an artist, did you see? Like, him, did you hear him on Rogan? No, but a lot of this actually, I saw a clip, and a lot of what he talked about is like, I literally, I like the book so I much. How you do? Rogan I was highlighting me. like every like like one quote a page, just like oh my god, I need to remember this. And I gave my Kindle to my assistant, and I said, get a digital picture frame, and fucking put all of the quotes I highlighted on the digital picture frame and just have that shit rotate so that like when I'm at my office, I can just every now and then I'll go grab a coffee, but like, great. Wait, can I get those pictures sent to me and then I don't have to read the book. I can just read the good parts. <laughs> yeah, I can do that. <laughs> Wait, do you have a, do you have, do you have the, uh, she has a document. She could probably send you with all of the quotes that I highlighted that I liked the best. There's like 180. Can you just do that? And then don't worry about the book. Yeah. <laughs> can you do that for all your books? Yeah, Hold on, can, hang on. That's a really fun business model. What I just I just read it and, and just tell us the good stuff. Right. Yeah. It's like Spark Notes, but gym, gym, gym notes. Gym notes. And it's just the it's the things that inspire you. Yeah. Like I do that with coaches quotes. Mm. Uh I, I write out like I love coaches. I love I'm very coachable. Mm. And so I love a good coach. Who's your favorite coach? Uh Jimmy Johnson. Jimmy Johnson, just for me, everything about him, uh, and he just is a guy that's got uh he he said something one time. Um, Jimmy Johnson said, uh, what was this? What was his line? Uh, uh, uh fucking on my phone. What about uh, coach Carter? You like coach Carter? Who's coach Carter? The movie. Oh, the, no, <laughs> no, I don't know what coach Carter is. Dude, Jamie L. Jackson, coach Carter. Oh uh, no. I never my saw basketball it. coach saw that in high school and just completely ruined all of our lives because he just wanted to be so much like coach Carter. And, uh, it sucked. Wait, what was Coach Carter like? Our top coach, coach Carter was like the guy who's like, "We're not going to touch a basketball for two weeks because we're going to oh. do fundamentals and conditioning." Jesus and our Christ. coach was like, "Oh wow, fuck yeah, Coach Carter!" And then we just <laughs> practice sucked for the the next three years. Oh, and, that uh, fucking yeah. blows. <laughs> yeah. No, uh, Coach. He said, uh, "What what's it called when you get really tired?" Uh, it, there's a real great word for fatigue? it. Fatigue. Fatigue makes cowards of us all. Huh. And I loved that. I was like, yeah, you're right. When you are tired, you don't deliver. I, it's one of the only reasons I ever thought about quitting drinking mm. is I watch 
I watch people who don't drink a lot and how much energy they have at times. And I go, oh, I envy that energy. And then I go, I can get that energy. I didn't, I didn't drink last night because I wanted to be pre present for the interview. So yeah, I could feel it. For real? No. No. Oh. <laughs> well, I didn't. I've, I've just got off a plane from Australia. Wait, I want to go back to the thing Which about. Which is impressive. And But while we're on that subject, then we can move on. No, no, keep going. Yeah. I'm not good. Like, what I was going to say about the Antarctica trip is a lot of people on that trip were very disciplined. Like, didn't drink, didn't eat meat, were gluten free, vegan. Ugh. And I was like, I'm not willing to go all the way like that. Like, I could, I could have some discipline, but I'm not going to sacrifice all of it. I can't, I don't understand that life. I prefer the times that come from doing those things uh, to the benefits of not. That is a, that's a brilliant statement. The, the flicker of the flame that happens when spontaneity shows up mm -hmm. and someone's like, like I got offered Coke the other night and, uh, <laughs> Oh, uh, I, I, I told you not to tell anyone about this. <laughs> uh, well, it was it was a moment. I, I, I'm gonna. Ha you have to edit this out. You have to edit this out. Mm -hmm. Then you did it. No, I didn't. I didn't. I didn't. And I've been regretting it. <laughs> you regretting? No one has ever regretted okay. not doing cocaine. Yeah. And by the way, I got offered coke. I think three more times within a week. Uh huh. And every time I went, don't, just don't, and I didn't every time and i'm glad i didn't but i'll tell you what there was a guy one time who asked me to take a shot buddy hackett asked me if i take a shot with him and i just wasn't drinking at the time because i was trying to be healthy mm -hmm. and i didn't take a shot with him and i was like i was like fuck i kind of wish i had taken a shot with buddy hackett buddy hackett yeah that's a that's a name well i ended up drinking with him a different time after that luckily um, it was the most disgusting shot I've ever had in my entire life. But Buddy Hackett sounds like a dude that you. Wait, you don't know Buddy Hackett with. is? I don't know Buddy Hackett. Oh, you don't know Buddy Hackett is? I don't. Oh, Buddy Hackett. Oh, this guy, dude, that's fucking Curly. No, no, no. <laughs> is that not Curly from the Three Stooges? No, it's not. No, Buddy Hackett. Buddy Hackett was. What am I thinking of that he was in? Uh, uh, he pull up his IMDb. He was in everything. I mean, he was really big on Carson. He'd go on Carson, and what's the the race movie they did? It's going to be at the very top. I'm confused. I know him from something. The Mad, 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 Mad World. Herbie the Love Bug. He was the <laughs> voice in Pauly. Oh, I see what you're saying now. You, you like, this is a guy you got to. It's like it was he's old school Hollywood. Yeah. And 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 I ended up doing a shot with him. He used to pour his own alcohol in a flask and carry it around with him. And it was like tequila, gin. It was a mix he liked. Uh -huh. And I ended up doing a shot with him one time. But the that moment I didn't do the shot, I went, fuck. But you know, when it comes to doing shots, I, I have to stop. I can't do I ended up I ended up doing shots with a guy named Stylebender in New Zealand and was the best shot I've ever had. Me and him challenged the whole bar to a fist fight. It was a pretty fucking great wow. moment. We stood up back to back and he was like, I thought he was doing a, I thought he was doing a Steve Harvey routine, but he, he wasn't, he was just talking and there's a Steve Harvey. You ever seen Steve Harvey talk about his wife, Marjorie? No. Oh dude. You want to talk about love? This is, I know you're in love. Pull up Steve Harvey <laughs> and Marjorie. This is like, the, uh, this gets me emotional because this is how I feel about Leanne, but, he, uh, Steve Harvey and Marjorie, uh, oh, you're never, get, you're never gonna find it. You're never gonna find it. It's too hard to find. But he goes, he goes, uh, I'm hers and she mine. I'll fight every motherfucker in her for her. Like, that's like a really cool thing. Mm. I thought that's what Stylebender was doing. <laughs> I thought he was going, I'm his and he's my, and I don't know why I thought I was pretty fucking wasted. And so I started going around the bar going, we'll fuck everyone up in here. At, say something now and then i realized there were a couple tables that would be difficult so i just started doing it to women's tables <laughs> say something and then and everyone started laughing because it's the fat guy and then a guy clearly in shape and we're in new zealand everyone knows who he is and everyone's like we're not fighting the middleweight champion of the world and this drunk white guy and then i bought the whole bar rounds of shots and then we all drank a shot of buffalo trace and then I bought him another round of shots. When you buy the whole bar shots, do not look at that check. What, what, what did that come out to? 
I didn't look at it. You don't look at those checks. Mm. You enjoy the moment, and then you just you walk away from it. Mm -hmm. You enjoy the moment and walk away from it. Mm -hmm. I've had a couple of those where you just the, like I'll tell you, would you, do, were you there for the wine tasting night in Serbia? Yeah, I never looked at that bill because it was a fun fucking night, and you don't want to. You don't need to know. Yeah, you just all you know is that you don't want anyone to run out of booze. You want to make sure you have good glasses, and you want everyone to experience it. And if I'm sitting there thinking about a price tag on it, I, then I'll be like, oh, fuck, this is, why Why am I doing this? Yeah. Do, 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 do you remember, the, okay, do you remember the night? Do you remember the night? At, uh, uh, the night. Yeah. The night that, yeah. The fucking, the night. The night. Ah! With the fucking sparklers and the, the Joker dude flying down the ladder and. God, I wish I wish I had any footage of that. Oh, I got I got footage for real. Oh yeah, it was. I took a I took a few videos of like the because I was just like, holy shit, what is this place? <laughs> the funniest thing. This is how you know you're in another country. Wait, describe. Can you describe it as best you can so people that, like listening know? Yes, we get there and it was like it's a, on the water. It was a cabaret. It was a cabaret club. Cabaret club on the water on in the water. Serbia. And there was when we first got there, it was like a very like kind of tame cabaret style performance with a bunch of dancers all just magnificently in sync and then it started getting a little crazier and then they, then they had props and they had like all this stuff and then and then next thing you know there's like a joker type character who's running around terrorizing the bar and like doing this crazy like routine uh sliding down the ladder and then they start giving out sparklers and this is when i knew we were in a different country because they gave out fire <laughs> indoors and then they gave out all this fake money to throw yeah so they literally in one moment were like now's the time where we light fire and we throw paper into the air into the air and there's sparklers falling people are dropping sparklers people are dropping sparklers i'm like this is the biggest fire safety risk I've ever seen. The, the whole look place was smoky, but the was... look on your face was fucking priceless. There's a moment I remember. I, I, I it must have been from Peter's video or something where you have a sparkle in your money and you have a drink and you're just looking around like I was what the like, fuck this, is this? I was like, because it just it just turned into like we were like having dinner. Yeah, we were having dinner there, and then and then we started like started dancing, and then all of a sudden everyone had sparklers, and it was like that that epic song. Um, uh, <laughs> and, and i was just like ah i just felt like yeah <laughs> i didn't look at that check <laughs> yeah i bet i wouldn't have looked at that one either that, the look on your i have a video of you and you're, you're like ah for real yeah i don't I, that night was fucking so many of those nights i remember if i'm not mistaken you walked home with martin and asked if you could carry him yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you go can i lift you up I was straight up asking him. I was like, "So you're you're on steroids, right?" <laughs> and he was he, he wasn't really liking it too much. And like, and I realized that like in the morning, I was like, I was kind of asking him a lot of questions about steroids, yeah. and he was just like not really feeling. It. He, he was he's he'll be out here for the premiere. Oh hell yeah! Yeah, he's a fucking. Is this the place we were at? I think so, dude. It's, I have the video right. Wait, here. send it to Halston. What? Send it to yeah, text it to Halston. Okay. Do your airdrop on Halston? It's doing that thing. You know how videos have to like load now? Oh. Right? God damn it. Oh, yeah. Damn. That was a fucking. Wait, should I airdrop this? Can I ask you a weird question? Is the. Do, 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 as a guy in a, in a committed relationship, do does not hooking up with a strange chick take away from those evenings at all no that's like honestly the last thing on my mind i was thinking of that like because no one hooked up with anyone everyone was in committed relationships no everyone just went home and i don't think it takes away but i have friends no. who unless they're getting laid can't do that I, yeah and i don't get that i don't get the people that are like there just to like hook up with chicks and get laid like when i'm going out literally all i'm there to do is dance if there's a fucking <laughs> dance floor that's all i want i For just want to fucking i just want good music and just to dance my ass off and to be drenched in sweat and get home and be like that was fucking awesome it's 4 30 in the morning let's go to sleep really yeah 
<laughs> like I was just at Coachella and like at Coachella, I just, I am just dancing for 72 hours straight. For real? Oh yeah. So wait, hold on. You went to Coachella this year? I go every year. It's Do like you, my 12th time. I know Blink-182 was there, right? Yeah, I didn't, uh, I didn't see him because they were too far away from the other stuff I was seeing. Like what kind of music are you into? Like I went to, um... I don't know how to say. I like a I like a lot of shit. Like I like like K Trinata, Anderson Pack. Uh, I like Rufus DeSoul. I like Tom Mitch. I don't know one of those people. Right, but like at, so Bjork. I would have seen Bjork in a heartbeat. I saw Burna Boy. He was fucking sick. I saw Chemical Brothers, K Trinata. I saw SG, uh, Eric Prids. Like I I saw like probably twenty. 20 shows so do you, you like more like uh like a industrial music or like i like a lot i like electronic stuff and then i also like the, i like i like uh what is it like 120 beats per minute i, I that whatever that is at uh -huh. that pace really allows me to stop thinking uh -huh. i'm the, someone had a in uh, at a party that i we were listening to music and someone was like and i was like whoa what is this and then I didn't, and then I tapped out for the next song or whatever. Mm -hmm. And then it came back and I went, what is this? And someone that knew a lot about music goes, oh, you just got to find your groove, man. You're 120 beats per minute. What, and I, that stuck with me forever. So I it's, think a faster paced thing. I like, I don't like things that are just like this fucking the same. Like, yeah, I like more like dynamic stuff that like changes. Like, you know, where it's like you could do that for a little bit and then you can shift and like groove a little more yeah. and disco is making kind of a interesting like disco house kind of a vibe right now really yeah it's fun wait so wait did you see any like and this sounds i don't mean like that burna boy isn't an actual artist but like burna boy is like the biggest artist in africa and it's a huge blind spot for america that's why i was interested in seeing burna boy because i know in africa he's like the way cristiano cristiano ronaldo is in europe what is it soccer player <laughs> you know Cristiano Ronaldo, the soccer player. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like the way they worship. Oh, him, oh, oh, oh! You just mean okay? I, was I just like, mean oh, I'm yeah. just comparing. Like we don't really have anyone in America that we're like fucking. That's our guy. But yeah. like Burna Boy is massive, but he's just a huge blind spot. So I really wanted to see. You know, oh, it's like Bad 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 Bu Bunny or De Bad, Bad Bunny is all. I mean, he's Bad like Bunny the biggest. Like he's big, like the biggest artist in the world right now. Yeah, and I no one. I or not no one, but I had never heard of him. And then all of a sudden they're like. Oh, he sold out nine dot dot dots, and I was like, "Yeah, he's he's oh, he's like a, this is crazy." Burna but, Boy's a, a Burna Boy's a rock star. He's like a legit fucking. Yeah, he's dope. Oh wow! And so, but, what does he do? Is it is it like singing? Or he's got DJ? a lot of songs that are kind of like uh like he's, he's he's a big Afro beats guy. Yeah, which is which is fun. You can you might like, like Afro that. beats. Uh, like that song "Last Last" is good. That's crazy that you can be huge in a different country and in America. It's almost like it's it is kind of cool when you don't know of someone. There's so many people that I see um that are, have like 45 million followers that I've never heard of before. And yeah. I'm and I'm just like, how is that possible? Like to be that famous and I've never even heard of you. Like it's it's, just... it's a weird thing when you go like uh like when you it, it, uh to live in oblivion. I go yeah, I've never I've never heard of that at all. It's right. a, it's an empowering thing in a weird way where you go like mm -hmm. almost like you can stop playing this Halston. I can't hear it. I know I, I'm not gonna put them on. I'm not I'm not gonna see if I like. That's like being on a, a date and go. No, you should listen to Frank Black. You'll like him. And then you're like, wow, this is apparently music you got to get into. Like you don't know who Frank Black is probably. I don't know. Frank Black was the lead singer of the Pixies, and okay. he DM'd me recently. It's not a big deal. <laughs> and so, but like. It's crazy when you don't know something. Yeah, and that's everyone why everyone else knows it, and then you, it's like, but it's a, it's a, it's. My wife says it's the arrogance of a loser to be like, yeah, I, I don't know that shit, and eh, whatever, and then yeah. go, okay, so like, the whole world does, but you don't. Maybe we, if you give it a try, you might like it. Uh -huh. Like that's what when we when we left Serbia, and I was like, that it was when I found out I didn't know any of your music, and I was like, well, maybe if I, maybe I'm turning into an old man. Maybe I need to try to. Uh, broaden my what yeah. I like a little bit because it's it's not it's cool to like something that you've never heard of yeah. and be like all of a sudden you're into something and like oh fuck yeah like I think what's what I love so much about going to like festivals like Coachella is like 
you see a bunch of people that you would never m make the effort to go see on their own. Like I, I probably wouldn't have gone to a Burna Boy concert. I probably wouldn't have gone to see like, you know, the Chemical Brothers or Eric Prids. Like I didn't yeah. even, I wasn't even that familiar with with the Chemical Brothers. And then I went to their show and I was like, they're fucking. Oh legit. my god, their like visuals were like it's like an art film. Yeah, and I was just standing there like totally, totally to, sober. Is it? This is how? Oh, is this the video? <laughs> yeah, this is us in Serbia. And then it really turns up in like 15 seconds. Wait for it. <laughs> this was fucking crazy. trying to get them to buy the machine two and three right now well how would that even just, just go just buy them i was gonna ask you now that the machine the movie is coming out are you going to retire this story <laughs> i guess you'll have to come to the top soft fall tour to find out <laughs> <laughs> the uh, I don't. I don't think. I don't I mean. I don't think so. I don't know. And I mean, look. If the movie does moderately well, then no, because I mean, <laughs> you know, is, you know. Can I tell you how little I know about movies? Do you do you get tired of telling the story? No, I don't get. I don't have a problem. I don't have a problem telling the story at all. At all. At, literally at all. But like, there's no part of you that like. I feel like if I if I tell a story multiple times, if I'm like, I don't know, I start to feel like. I don't know the the like I just start to get in my own head about saying it again. No, yeah, but I do it. But I do it for a living. Living, mm -hmm. it's like uh, you know. It's the other thing is it's like I, I had a I had, it was a growth period of like I retired the story in two thousand I think sixteen, so I'm never telling it again. And then that January that the machine story went viral, and. In 2017, I did my first show, and I went, and I was done telling it. I was, I had retired it, mm -hmm. and I, and they all were all yelling the machine, and I'd already done like an hour and fifteen. I had a second show that night, and I was like, and it was sold out in a blizzard, and I was like, oh no no, I I retired that story, and the guy goes, the fuck you did? I just saw that on fucking Facebook, dude. That's the only reason we're here. I got twelve fucking people. Tell the fucking story. And I was like, oh okay. And then I realized once that went viral that there were people bringing people to the shows to hear the, hear it for the first time. Mm. So I said, I'll do this one run, and then I'll retire it. And then the venues got bigger, and they got bigger and bigger. And, I mean, I, I, I jokingly said when I was in theaters, I go, this run of theaters, this is for Body Shots tour. I said, this run of theaters, and I'm done. Because I was like, you can't add more. Like, I'm doing two shows a night, four shows in some venues. In, in, four a night? Four no, four shows like two Saturday, two Friday. Oh wow. And so in like Minneapolis, I did six shows Damn. In, in theaters. And so I was like, so this is it. And then that you go to bigger theaters. Now you're in theaters and you're moving more tickets. And right now I'm doing arenas. And so I'm like, and I and I like and I'm doing arenas in countries that I that I've never like so I you know doing arenas in Australia. And I'm like, okay, those are that's new fans. That's new people that have never never heard me tell the story live. Mm -hmm. And I know how I feel as an as a fan when I when I want to see something when I'm excited to see something mm -hmm. and and it doesn't show up I get bummed and then here's the crazier part so I'm with Ron White you probably aren't familiar but Ron White has maybe the best story told in stand up comedy called Tater Salad it's fucking a perfect story mm -hmm. it's perfect and so I was doing Joe's Club Joe's New Club Comedy Mothership and I was on stage and I was just doing new material it's a club I would never tell the machine in a club. And uh, they were losing their minds for the machine, and I was like, I was like, guys, I'm I'm definitely not telling that story. And they were like, come on, the machine. And so I said, I'll tell you what, I'll tell the machine if Ron White tells Tater Salad, and the place 
went fucking bananas. And they're like, wait, Ron White's in here? Because he's upstairs. He's hiding. They're like, Ron White's in here? And he's about to tell Tater Salad? Ron White comes on stage, tells Tater Salad. The place goes fucking ape shit. And then I realize I can't follow that <laughs> with the machine. I ended up to do 15 more minutes of new material and then slide in the machine. But like it was, and so, and I, the other thing is, is and I, I, there's a lot of people would give you their opposing opinions is when I say it's, it's, it's pretty cool when you say when I was 22 years old, I got involved with the Russian mafia and you hear 19,000 people yeah. fucking explode. Yeah. It, it It's, it's a cool feeling. It's like, I was saying to someone the other day, it was, I was listening to someone talk about when I take my shirt off. When I take my shirt off, that energy is so fucking, I, I would say palatable, but I don't know what that word means. Mm -hmm. But but like so fucking visceral, so real, mm -hmm. that like I'll never stop taking my fucking shirt off. <laughs> and, and, and listen, when the energy changes and the energy shifts, mm -hmm. and and I'll then I'll then I'll reconsider, but I think I mean yeah. I said to someone, they go, "How? What? What are your expectations for the machine opening day weekend?" And I was saying on press, 152 million opening day weekend. <laughs> Do you know how ridiculous that is? Yeah. I didn't know that. <laughs> yeah, so I said you want it to be bigger than Top Gun Maverick, <laughs> <laughs> and I went, "Is that how big that is?" And they're like, "It didn't. It made 120 million." And I went, "Whoa! I would don't. I won't be that." And you big. go, "Wow! This is going to be huge then." <laughs> Holy shit! 150. That's that's record breaking numbers. <laughs> wow. I, I had no it. idea the machine was going to be that big. <laughs> be this podcast is sponsored by maybe my favorite sponsor, Mad Rabbit. They make the best tattoo bomb. And that's right, I said tattoo because I'm unique. And that's how I say the word tattoo. I think it's because most of the my early uh, uh, learning of the word was on a Benny, a Benny Hill. And that's how they say it over in London, tattoo. And so I think that's where it came from, and uh, and I keep it that way. But this is what Mad Rabbit has the best tattoo bomb you're ever going to find, and they're cool. They're cool because they still sponsor the show, and I pronounce their, what, their entire business model incorrectly. Here's the deal. Weather's getting nice, and it's so we're starting to spend a little more time outdoors and in the sun. And if you know what I mean, tattoos are in full view. You got to check out Mad Rabbit. Mad Rabbit is committed to reinventing tattoo aftercare. Founded by two friends with a passion for ink, Mad Rabbit creates simple and effective natural products that help improve the healing process and preserve all tattoos. And they're delivered directly to your door. Here's their product. Their hero product, the Tattoo Balm, revitalizes and replenishes and proactively preserves tattoo ink. It's effective on both old and new tattoos and skins of all type. We got that for Leanne. We got it. We got it in the thing. I don't have any tattoos, maybe because I say it wrong. Plus, they've got all the products you need for your tattoo, from a tattoo sunscreen to a tattoo soothing gel and more. In April 2021, just two years into Mad Rabbit's existence, they became a carbon neutral company. I got this for Georgia. Georgia got a tattoo. We got into a big fight, and then I ended the fight by say, sending her a bunch of Mad Rabbit products. And now she loves me, and all her friends love me. So when you think tattoo care, think Mad Rabbit. Think Mad Rabbit. They've preserved over 1.5 million tattoos, and right now, they've got an exclusive offer for just our BirdCast listeners. If you go to madrabbit.com slash BirdCast and use the promo code BirdCast, you'll receive 25% off. That's 25% off when you head to madrabbit.com slash BirdCast and use our promo code BirdCast. Well, the thing I was most um, <laughs> surprised by when I saw it. This is my acting? <laughs> no. No, it was the the size. Like, it feels like a fucking massive it does. movie. Like, it is a huge, it feels like a fucking Marvel movie level movie. Like, it's big. Yeah. it's I, 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 the, I, the very opening scene of, like, the movie you know when it like mm -hmm. I was like I remember being in the thing going oh this isn't what I thought I was signing up for yeah like and I was like oh fuck this is no Peter fucking crushed it Peter crushed it he crushed it I he, think... he didn't have he didn't have to go that hard I'll tell you I'll it's tell like you... one of those things where you're like you didn't have to you didn't have to do you didn't have to go that hard I, I I'll tell you the the way I think the people will process the movie is I think they're gonna go, well this is a great movie and Bert didn't fuck it up. <laughs> like that was you know when we when we did testing it like it tested extremely well like through the roof mm -hmm. and they said 
what's your number one takeaway from this movie? And everyone was like, he can, he's not ruining the movie with his acting, <laughs> which is like a huge compliment yeah. because you have seen guys that go in and do a movie and, and they're, and, and so I was like, and so if, if I don't fuck, like if that doesn't like draw you out of the movie, then mm-hmm. all the stuff that's in the movie, like you murdering, fucking uh eva's fucking amazing in she it. really she's she fucking amazing great. in it my mark mark hamill's great the fucking and it looks beautiful it's... like it the shots are just like so well done and i also the thing that initially drew me into the project besides the fact that it was an awesome story and you know you yeah. and all that was just the way the script turned it from your story into a movie yeah i just think is like the way that was done, I just think was, I can't imagine a better way to turn it into like an actual movie. Yeah, I'm excited. I, I don't know. So when you go to a, like a, the screening, will you sit and watch it or are you just going to go sit and drink? Um, at, oh, like at the premiere? Yeah. I, I like to watch it in, in, in the crowd. Yeah. Um, you know, I... I saw it for the first time. I just saw it was like just me, my girlfriend, and my friend Mike. Your girlfriend texted me. That was very sweet of her. She did. Or DM'd me or whatever. She she really enjoyed it. Yeah. And I didn't think she was going to. I didn't think she was going to either. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's like it's like I can get like I can get. There's a lot of people I can get, but like she, I she must have DM me. She definitely doesn't have my number. But yeah. she, she was yeah. She liked it. And she I was I was like. Anytime anyone likes anything I do, like uh, Razzle Dazzle is a perfect example. But everything I do, I sit and I go, is that fucking, is this even good? Like the cabin, I, I couldn't even sit through, I couldn't even sit through the edit. Mm-hmm. They'd send edits and I just gave it to Leanne and go, can you just give me my, give them my notes? Because yeah. I can't, I'm like, it's I, I'm so embarrassed. Because I, I don't, I, I like being in the moment. I like making stuff, but with I'm not good at editing and I'm also not good at giving notes. Yeah. And I remember one night, uh, he, I'm in bed and I hear Leanne cackling. This is during the pandemic. Cackling. When anyone's looking for anything good to watch, she's cackling in the living room. So I come out and she's watching the cabin. And I go, what are you laughing at? And she goes, this is fucking hilarious. I go, it is? She was like, you were there. How do you not know that? And I go, I don't know. I just, mm-hmm. like wh- like my favorite parts of the movie are you in it. Because I because I have no connection to that. Mm-hmm. Like, I, like I'm jealous of the scenes you dig. So I go, those are fucking like, like i don't i'm not gonna spoil things but like i, I watched it and i was like oh fucking yeah so like that's there you know some, there were some fun ones i think when you do edit though you get better at watching yourself objectively because like i mean from i'm making youtube videos for so long like i have to watch i have to watch my own shit over and over and over yeah. again i'm editing all these videos and like by the end i definitely hate it like i definitely want by the time i upload it i'm sitting there and i'm like just dead face just like yeah that's really funny <laughs> Mm, no that's not good huh okay now it works <laughs> that's hilarious and then i upload it and I'm like get me the fuck away from this thing and then i can watch it like later on and be like okay yeah i'm like that with a new joke like a new joke when you get a new joke mm-hmm. you get really really excited about it and then and then you tell it a couple times and you're like why are they laughing at this part right like oh like a part that you weren't expecting them to laugh yeah, yeah and you're like what i don't get it am i saying it different like right. i used to have this joke about it was about black baby powder. They should make black baby powder so that because all the white stuff just stands out. I go when you and I say to a white guy when you put it on it blends in, but when he puts it on, I point to a black guy. I go, he's got to ghost ride the whip, and it made no sense. And they would laugh so hard. And then I remember one time someone backstage goes, "Why do you think they laugh at that part?" And I go, "Why? What are you saying?" And he goes, "Well, it's not funny. It makes no sense." And I go, "Yeah, I have no idea why they're laughing either." <laughs> like I said it one time and it worked, and then I went, "I'll just stick with it for the rest of my fucking life." But yeah, I, like I feel like that. Is it easier when you do someone else's project to just be like, "Ah, eh, whatever, my job's done." Yeah, it's easier to like. I mean, like, because there's no, there's not pressure really. Yeah. When it's not, if you're just like acting in something and. I mean, it's different if you're, like, the main character, but if you're just acting in something and it's not, like, the project isn't on your back, it's, like, you can kind of just show up and do your job. And that's also kind of the most helpful thing for the project is just to, like, be aware of your place in the project and just show up and do your job and not, like, make things about you that aren't about you. Sweet. Okay, so what's your your list of actors you want to work with? Dude, I've been pretty, like, 
fortunate to have worked with like most of the people that I have been like dying to work with. So For real? I think oh, there's thank still you, like thank you. three. Uh, yeah, yeah. There's still like <laughs> three or four that I like grew up idolizing that I haven't worked with yet. But um, like I got to work with like Jonah Hill, Judd Apatow, Adam Sandler, um, and then like all the people that were in like, that. Did you, would you, would you, you did uh, Grown Ups? I did Grown Ups too. Yeah, yeah. my first movie ever. So I like went from being on YouTube and like making my own shit to like being on this like massive movie where they're building a duplicate house just to remake the backyard and like a massive football field sized tent. And I'm just like, holy shit, like this is insane. I wonder if I could sell my social media as behind the scenes for an Adam Sandler movie so I could work with Adam Sandler. I just want to work. I want to watch him work. Mm -hmm. I want to see what he does. He's just the coolest fucking guy. I've, and, I've, I've met, I'm, well, I fucked, I met him, but I fucking ruined it. Yeah. You, you've seen my interview with Adam Sandler? No. It's so bad. Is it? Uh, it I mean, I feel like I, I was like, I did that movie. I was like 18, 19. I'm coming from college thinking I'm like, you know, thinking I'm knowing what I'm talking about. Like, I wasn't a dick in any way. I definitely was like, but I also, like, I don't think I was able to fully express how much it meant to me to be yeah. there. And I and I kind of wish I could tell him. Chris Farley, when he interviewed Paul McCartney, do you ever see that? God, see, that this is why I couldn't date a young kid. 30, so you're 30? 31. Yep, 31's my threshold. This guy would have to date, like, a probably 39-year-old. How old are you? 40. <laughs> no, 50. I'm 50. Okay. Yeah. I was going to say nine years is not no, that crazy. 50, 50. But 19, that's fucking nuts, dude. Yeah. That's, I could, you could be my child. I could. It's, it bothered me a little bit when we were shooting because I kept going, like, oh, fuck. We can't really hang out. It's like, <laughs> like, it's a little creepy if I go, if, if I invite you and Zoe over to our house and you guys come over, you're like, it smells like old people. <laughs> And you're like, oh wow, look, they have pictures of their kids up. I don't think uh I don't think it's weird. I think once you're over a certain age, it's no longer weird. That's the weird thing. My dad was friends with the dude 10 years younger than him, like the whole time. Mm -hmm. I remember being like, what do they have in common? And mm -hmm. then you get older and you're like, oh, a lot. A lot. Yeah. Like at a certain age, it just becomes about life. Yeah. My oldest friend, who's my oldest friend? I don't have a lot of old. I mean, I should make some older friends. You know? Yeah. All right. So there's no actors you. I got to get you out of here. What? How? Well, there's no actors you want to work with. I'm chilling, actually. Um, okay. No, I really want to. I mean, Will Ferrell has always been a dream of mine to work with. Yeah. I technically worked with him. I did a, a voice in that movie, Strays, that's coming out. The oh, wait, you're doing a movie with him right now? Oh, uh, wait, you did Strays? He's in Stray. He's the main character in Strays. And you're in Strays? And I, I was in a scene in Strays, so I got to work with him there. And uh, then, can I tell you But Strays? this is my first time, like, working with him, like, acting with him. And the other guy, the only other, like, two main guys that come to mind that I haven't worked with already are, are Jack Black and Seth Rogen. Seth Rogen would be badass. Seth Rogen, Seth Rogen would be really badass because I think he can... Cause I, I, it's funny to watch Seth Rogen in little things. Like he, he was in uh, Anchorman. Yeah, he's in. I mean, I don't know if he was in Anchorman. He, but he, he was in Anchorman. He's the cameraman. Oh right, right. So like you forget, like you forget, like he was in. A, he had a lot of small roles in like little things early on. Yeah, and then you're like, oh, that's fucking Seth Rogen. Yeah, and then you realize it. it it's cool when you see those because then you go, oh, he's kind of right. I, I don't mean to say worked his way up, but he's done a lot of the jobs. Right. So like one of the thing, one of the drawbacks of me is I've never did that. So I, I don't have a lot of that energy. Mm -hmm. So I don't, I don't, maybe I don't see it or respect it a ton, <laughs> you know, but like he does. Right. That's what's cool about him is he does. Yeah. And then he, and then made his own movies and, and he's, he's a fucking, he's a, I, I think he's a cool motherfucker. Yeah. Jack Black, I just think is like the funniest. He just Jack makes Black me laugh. Like School of Rock, Nacho Libre was like one of my favorite movies when I was like 13. Jack Black's. Yeah. And Jack, then, did you see Super Mario? No. Dude, I loved Super Mario. For real? Oh, yeah. I took some mushrooms, went and saw Super Mario, took more mushrooms, went to Super Mario World. 
and just fucking vibed out, dude. I was jumping, hitting my my head on the little <laughs> ding, 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 the little blocks. It was incredible. Oh, is that Super Mario's? My, my Isla texted me the song to Princess Peach. Peach. Yeah. <laughs> Jack Black as Bowser. Comes out of nowhere in the movie. It's fucking hilarious. Really? It's really funny. I loved it. That's fucking, yeah, Jack Black would be a cool dude. I remember watching him when I first moved out to L.A. It was right when he was starting to pop, mm. and he was doing Tenacious D, but he was we, he, you'd see him at, at shows, mm. and he was like, I think he was dating Laura Keitlinger. That, that's crazy. Laura Keitlinger is, I mean, still is a great comic, but she was like a really big name in comedy, mm. and Jack Black, and I was, was like, was like part of Tenacious D. One of my best stories for a long time was when I was in high school. It was the first time I ever got drunk before like a school event. And they said, we have a celebrity guest. Because, and it was like a, a thing that everyone volunteered to do because all of it, it was like we held a prom for kids with like kidney failures or something. And so if you, if you worked at it, you'd get all your service hours. So we all get <laughs> hammered before Wait, this thing. Is that a thing. real thing? Yeah, it was a renal prom. And it okay. was like a nice thing that our school did yeah. put on this prom for kids that didn't have their proms because they were sick. Okay. It was everyone had kidney failure though? Uh, well, I don't know if it was all kidney failure. A okay. lot. It was a lot. Okay. Of, I don't know. Just seems very specific of like, yeah, listen, yeah. there's not going to be any fruit <laughs> juices. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> yeah. So this is a prom for guys a, that are nearsighted. <laughs> it, was, it was kids that didn't have prom because they were yeah. sick. Yeah. And, um, and they said there was going to be a celebrity guest because it was for charity. So we all just get hammered before this thing. And I, this is in the peak of like me having seen Nacho Libre and knowing every word to the movie. Yeah. And they go, and now for our celebrity guest, Jack Black. And I'm in the crowd just like, like I've never been drunk like at school. And I'm like, what the fuck is going on? Yeah. And Jack Black comes up and starts taking song requests. And I don't know if you've seen Nacho Libre, but there's a song called Encarnacion. Yeah, that he sings to the woman he loves, and me and my best friend we used to sing this all the time, like all around school. Halfway through the song, he forgets the words, and he's like, "Ah, oh, fuck!" And he's like, "I forgot the words," and everyone starts going, "Jimmy, Jimmy, tell him!" And he like points at me, and he's like, "You know the words?" And I'm like, "To kiss your mouth, I break my vow." <laughs> and he's like, "Thanks, dude." To and just goes right back into it, and I'm just like. Ah! And all my friends are like, ah, like grabbing like, you just sang to fucking Jack Black. And for like years, that was like my best. That was like the best thing that ever happened to me. Oh. It was incredible. That's fucking awesome. Yeah. Do you think Jack Black would remember? Only one way to find out. If I ever meet him, I'm going to ask him. I'm gonna be like, hey, do you remember this? All right. Hey, let's invite Jack Black to the premiere. <laughs> oh, yeah? Oh, nice. The uh, that'll be great. Wait, have you say he's coming? I think, yeah. Um, I think we need yeah, I don't know who's coming. Nah. Jack Black, I think for some reason, I feel like I know, uh, I think he might have just followed me on Instagram. I don't have my phone, I don't know. My Instagram, who's followed me since Razzle Dazzle, has gotten a little better, like meaning like it's gotten a little juicier. Mm. Of like, like I got like, but but who I am, who I get excited about is probably not who you get excited about. Do you feel this was something I experienced on Twitter? The more like uh, cool people on, that followed me, Twitter at all. The more cool people that followed me on Twitter, the more I, the less I tweeted. The more I was like, ah, I don't want to say that. If, oh, I, if no. so and so is going to see it, like I remember Seth Rogen started following me on Twitter like by on years ago, and at, and like for the next like six months, everything I was about to tweet, I was like. Oh, would Seth like that? <laughs> I don't. I don't want him to think I'm lame. And now I just like I can't even. I can't even do Twitter. I well, I don't do Twitter. I I don't I don't do Twitter at all because uh, they took your check away. No, no, no. I still have a check. They took mine, dude. So I'm selling my fucking Tesla. <laughs> wait, what is it? Wait, did they take checks away? Dude, they took my check. Wait, how? Why would they take checks? They took check because you have to pay now. What? Yeah. My, oh, the whole thing. Am on I paying? You're yeah, but am I paying for a check mark? You might I don't know. Be. I may not have a check mark. Some people got Pull them. Pull me up on Twitter. See if I have a check mark. <laughs> but I remember when I first got my check, it was a bunch of people were like impersonating me and saying like whack I, shit. I, I, I knew this was happening on Instagram. You could buy checks. Yeah. I didn't know this was happening on 
Twitter? Okay, uh, you're, you're good, man. Yeah, but I got mine back in the day. I got mine a long time ago. I got mine in like 2011. Mm, I bet I was before that. <laughs> what you year? Have check year? Off, bro? You know how I got mine? You know how I got mine? Uh, Warren Sapp. He, he had... Warren Sapp, and I, over at Twitter. Warren Sapp said to me, you got a blue check mark? And I said, no. And he goes, you want one? And I was like, please. We were at a theme park. We were at uh, at uh, Magic Mountain. This is how you had to get checks back in the day? This is what well, it was at the beginning of Twitter. And he called a guy. <laughs> he had to go to Magic Mountain with Warren Sapp. <laughs> yeah, that's and how I got a go check to mark. go to a little kiosk, and there was a guy working there. And that was Elon. And he said, uh, he goes, all right. Upload you, uh, upload your Instagram real quick. Like, de delete it and then reload it. See if it, or, you know, just reload it. Mm -hmm. I reloaded it. I had a blue check and I went, shut the fuck up. Wow. He was like, yeah, you're welcome. I was like, oh, thanks. And well, then I, what I was going to say is like, you could see a bunch of positive things. And if you see one thing, it's like if someone's like, you're a fucking idiot. You're like, whatever. But if someone says something that actually you were already thinking about yourself. <laughs> I, here's the, here's the worst part. So then. I've been, and then I've hired this uh, woman. I say woman, my friend Victoria, but she's. A, I hired her. She's a real social media person, mm -hmm. and because she just knows. It, first of all, she has in lines of communication with everyone. So if something's happening with something, she can figure it out. But more importantly, she's wise to how to tweet. And, and I and I was just like, just keep me out of the fucking, keep me out of Twitter. Mm -hmm. And then Rogan sends me a fucking article on Twitter, so I go to check it out. And, and I can't open it. And I was like, fuck. Mm. And, I, and I and and something happened with Twitter where they they said, hey, if you don't log in now, you're gonna have a hard time logging in. And I didn't have my login password on my new phone. It wasn't saved in my keychain. Mm -hmm. So I couldn't log in. So I couldn't log into my new one. So I created a burner account. This is the worst burner account you've ever heard of in your entire life. Is it at not Bert Kreischer? Nope. And a photo of you with a mustache. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> Way better. You, you with sunglasses, like and a, and a mustache. <laughs> I meant I didn't have my glasses with me, and I and I was needed a username. I don't know why, but I said, "Oops, I did it again." Right? Burner's just been exposed. Well, it oh it I okay. So then I and so then I get my burner, and then I jokingly. Like text to our group chat. Yeah, uh, you got me back on Twitter. I have a burner account now. And then I see that I, because I had my glasses, I I didn't put, again, I put Asian. So I said, oops, I did it Asian. And then I said that to someone on a radio show. I said, yeah, I have a burner account. And I said, oops, I did it Asian. And I misspelled Asian. So I didn't, I don't, my burner account is, oops, I did it ASEAN. And so, but, I, but, uh, but I, but I, I got, got on this fucking burner account, and I started going to like things on Twitter, and I fucking saw something about me again. I go, what am I doing? What am I fucking doing? Yeah. And so I said, I go, I'm out. I deleted Twitter off my phone again. This was in Australia. I was like, I was, and I was like, I'm fucking out. I don't want to fucking deal with it because it's like I don't. It's not real. Like it's not none of that. None of those conversations are are really happening with me in my life. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like the guy doesn't like you and he hates you. And there's a lot of people that it, the, the more, the more, like, especially when you start promoting something like I'm you, it, the, the more you promote, the more it gives you a reason for someone to not like you. Yeah. And so like when I promote a razzle dazzle, there's people that just were like, Oh, this fu fucking guy again. Mm -hmm. And so you're like, yeah, but I'm, I can't not promote something I did. I want people to see it. And for the little amount of people that dislike it, you get a ton of people that like it, and that's what you need to focus on. But I just read the negative thing. Yeah. Tune out. I'm jealous at when you hear people like, like that don't have any social media. Like yeah. me, David Davidson has. Yeah, zero. he has. He has no. He has no social media, and he, he changes his number like every fucking. He five DM'd weeks. me one time. I. I, I have. I think I have 20 Pete numbers. It's it's actually absurd. John Mulaney talked about this in his stand-up special. I started putting dates on them because I would be like, I just need to look for the yeah. most recent one. Well, it, the one I have isn't is dead. It's gone, dude. If, yeah. it, if it wasn't in the last four weeks, it's... No. He, he one time I tweeted, 
I was fucking in bed and I, or I, I posted on Instagram. It's weird that I'm laying in bed next to my wife thinking, oh, I like Pete Davidson's new haircut. He looks cute. <laughs> and then he wrote to me, hey, thanks for the message. But now all I'm seeing is how many people hate my new haircut. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, sorry, I didn't mean for that to happen. He's like, yeah. nah, you know, hope everything's good. Yeah. Like, it's just it, like, yeah, I can see why his amount of fame is like insane. Yeah. You just got to be off it totally yeah you gotta just tune out because i go this is the cra this is the crazy part like this is the it should be fun right mm -hmm. shouldn't it be fun it should be fun i always i or every, is it gross if you like it every it's not gross if you like it i don't think it's gross if you like it i've never done it so like well well oh like liking the i've never done a premiere? Red, I've never no, done i mean premiere. i think for you like this this is exciting like you put your, your it's your movie like yeah. you should you should definitely be excited i always like try to not get too excited about like premieres and stuff because i always feel like sort of disappointed afterwards not mm -hmm. in the project but in the thing like i think whenever you like something is a milestone on your calendar that's like coming up that's something like a premiere that's like you're just doing press it's not the fulfilling part of what you're doing yeah it's just the part where you put it out into the world it always feels a little disappointing really like i mean for me like the best part of the process is like when you finish making it or like a part along the way that excites you where something clicks and works and you're like fuck yeah and you have that adrenaline rush i never get that at like premieres i just generally feel like oh you feel a little like kind of vulnerable and like oh now everyone's just gonna judge the thing that i did yeah i can't imagine i mean a premiere leanne said to me for and razzle dazzle just came out so that's why i keep talking about it mm. but she said we should have a premiere party and i said no i have no interest in watching my special yeah with anyone else and she said yeah but we've done it before and i went no but what we did was we let our kids we let all our kids in the neighborhood watch the parts that they could watch about the kids mm -hmm. where i talked about them yeah and i was like that was fun because it was cool to watch a child go like well you said my name and mm -hmm. you're like yeah yeah you know but like i could not watch people watching my comedy specials are you gonna it, watch people watch the machine i don't know that's what i'm saying like I, I this is all new to me i'm excited about the event like i love having something to look forward to mm -hmm. and I, i'm excited about the event and the fun that it's gonna be and like i think you know it'll be fun to see everyone that was there that worked on it mm -hmm. that'll be cool but uh i think and i wouldn't say this about everything i think that you will enjoy watching this movie in a theater with the premiere crowd i think it'll play well and i think there'll be a lot of laughs and i think it'll make you happy i, th I will i will you know what happened when i did the first screening so i went to the first screening and i sat up front and i got two bottles of wine because i was like i'm not going to watch this sober and the <laughs> second the movie started i started bawling crying and i cried through the whole movie <laughs> and i did my lines to the screen <laughs> and they said hey we need to move you for the next screening because you really affect how we watch the movie. <laughs> yeah, don't change, bro. What is this? They're like, they're like, I feel like I shouldn't be here for this moment that Bert is having with his movie. <laughs> where he's like crying. Because if you're sitting in the front, everyone in the theater is looking at you. It you got to sit like in the back or in the middle. It was so bad. And so then the next screening, they sat me in the back and even Leanne was like, hey, you're being too loud crying stop like i just would get what emotional. were you crying about i just emotional it's crazy it's just insane yeah, it's yeah. insane what's like do you remember the, do you remember the day that i cried on set and you, all you did was you did a line you go my name is bird i don't go to class much mm -hmm. and i started crying uncontrollably i get that and they're like what is it? and i go i actually said that like it's crazy like yeah. i used to say that and then i'm watching someone say that it's an insane yeah. moment to have you know the line you know the line that is the the reason leanne fell in love with you right did i tell you that ever mm -mm. uh the guest book guest book is such a great fucking show oh yeah the guest book was such a great show did you ever see the joey diaz thing where he ends up sucking the guy's dick uh, the I, vr oh yeah that was a funny that was a funny that was concept fun. the guest book was so funny do you know the my favorite line and this is the line where leanne sh hit pause and was like he needs to play you uh it's when the uh the 
dude gets kicked out of his house and you offer to let him move into your van mm -hmm. and he goes i don't know man it's going to be tight two of us and you go no you'll have complete total privacy i have no peripheral vision <laughs> <laughs> it was such a great fucking line That's Leanne, really it funny. Pause. it's so funny because you're not that guy yeah but you play that guy so fucking well <laughs> you play that dude uh -huh. so well so what's the plan you go to atlanta tonight I'm going to Atlanta tonight. I'll when do you get to see Will? What? Do you plan on what you're going to say to Will? Well, I I know him at this point. I because he, like, he like produced he produced the movie I did uh, that that was With it Young Sundance. Taco? Young Taco. Young Taco. Who's Young Taco? You said Young Taco. I know, but I know, but you <laughs> said. Wait, is that a secret too? Oh no, that's a different movie. That's okay. A different okay. <laughs> Like you, you know, Young Taco. Young Taco. Can I shout out to Young Taco? <laughs> shout out to shout out to Travis. Is that what's I thought his name was Young Taco. Well, that's his Instagram name, but his name's Travis. Travis Bennett. Uh, Travis Bennett is a cool motherfucker to follow. Yeah, he was. Mm. He's been a fun follow. He's the man. He's a, he's he is, and he did something that was really fascinating. And it's like sometimes you watch things happen, and then you go, huh, oh, huh. Oh. I'm not giving you too much of the secret, but. Travis had a medical procedure done. Uh, we'll never know because he never shared what it was, but it just showed him in a hospital in a gown. And he took a picture, and I was looking, and I was so fascinated. And I went, through, I went through, I combed through all his things. You to figure sure, out what it maybe was. he just was at the doctor. No, it was a medical procedure. It was a medical procedure. I, and the only reason I know this is that it was like maybe it was like two or three pictures of him at the doctor. Whatever it was, I combed through all his pictures, and halfway through combing, two years back in his fucking things, I went. This will be a great way to announce a tour. For whatever it is, when someone goes to the hospital, your you you your empathy kicks in, and you go. I and by the way, shout out to Young Taco. I owe him this. <laughs> so then I had to do Red Rocks. I did Red Rocks after we got done filming, and I knew I had to get surgery because I ruptured my thing. And I went shout out to Young Taco. I'm going to do a read going into the surgery. I'm going to go do a read going into surgery. I'm going into surgery. I got, if there's one thing I can say right now, because a surgery picture gets a lot of things, and I sold out Red Rocks because of Young Taco. But Jimmy, can I tell you, like, what's, what is so fascinating to me, and maybe it's, maybe it, maybe this is, I don't know what this is, but it keeps coming back to me, is your mom's a speech pathologist, right? Uh, she, uh, no, she's an audiologist. Audi audiologist, yeah. audiologist, and your dad worked at LAX, right? Yeah. And that kid, and you have a brother, uh -huh. and that, but that kid does these crazy fucking things. Mm -hmm. Like my dad's, my dad, uh, I would, I would, all, I would, I would dare I say I, I came from privilege, only because anyone that looked from the outside in would think that. I don't think totally, but my dad was a lawyer for the Church of Scientology at one point. Wow. Yeah, and so. And my mom was a teacher, but but like I went to private school growing up. Mm. My dad will say stuff like, I can't believe this is happening to you. Mm. And then and because of my dad, the way my dad sees me, I am forced to go, I can't believe this is happening to me. Yeah. Knowing who you are and where you grew up and where and where you came from, these adventures you have in life, I I I get I get defensive sometimes because I want to go, I want to put in the comments every time I want to go. Do you know he's a regular person? Because that's the thing that you I, that you are just a regular person. Like you're a very talented regular person, but you're not like you're not uh, fucking Kendall Jenner. But you end up running in circles with Kendall Jenner, and then I go, "What the fuck?" Like that's insane to me. Does that make sense? Um. Yeah, I mean, I think you mean regular person in the sense that, like, I am. You didn't grow up in country clubs. Oh yeah, you oh, didn't grow yeah, up. You yeah, didn't yeah. grow up getting a, a Ferrari. You didn't get a, a Mercedes for your 16th birthday. Right, right. You didn't. Right. No, uh, I had an '88 Honda Prelude, which is, in hindsight, I wish I had just fucking owned it. But at the time, I was like super embarrassed because like everyone had cooler cars than me, and I had this yeah. like piece of shit '88 Honda Prelude that was like a stick shift. And I look back at photos, and I'm like, dude, you should have just fucking owned it. Yeah. That car is sick. <laughs> yeah, like it's it wasn't. But like in the way that like an old car is cool. Honda probably lose. Honda had a fucking run where they were making really cool cars. Like yeah, the, was, the Prelude was a legit cool fucking the car. The Prelude, it's I mean, and now I can look at it and be like, 
that's cool. But at the time, I was like so self conscious about the Honda Prelude. But yeah, I mean, I think like, yeah, it is when you hang out with your parents that you start. <laughs> yeah, dude, it was a white one. It was a, that was a sick fucking car. It was. I mean, it wasn't. It wasn't what you wanted to be whipping in high school. That thing. No, my buddy had a '91 Honda Prelude, and it was a fucking race car. I thought. Well, your buddy had a '91, and but you're 19 years older than me. Oh shit! Oh, you're right. Oh wait, hold on, hold on, yeah, hold yeah. on. Oh wait, you had an '88. Oh my god! I'm like, I'm like Jimmy. That was a cool car when we were yeah, in high no, school. No, 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 no. That was a really cool you know, car. I was, I was just calling. Oh, Jimmy. That was. I was like, Jesus, you're lucky. Yeah, no, I'm talking about 2007. <laughs> <laughs> Oh fuck! Oh fuck! Oh, that's right. You didn't. Oh yeah, that is. <laughs> yeah, my buddy had the '91. I'm like, wow, you know. He had a '91 in '91. He had a '91 in '91. Yeah, really yeah good I had the, the '88 and the '08. Oh, but that's the thing I can't get. I can't get away from is like, is like I think I'm a regular, pretty regular dude. Mm -hmm. But I think it's because I found success late in life. So I got to be regular by by force of nature, mm -hmm. by like having kids and being broke, and and going to schools where you watch parents be that were successful. Mm -hmm. And like I always looked at those parents that were successful, like Billy Crudup, is our kids are the same age, our oldest are the same age, and we went to preschool together. He was married to Elizabeth Masterson or something, mm -hmm. someone like famous, Mary Louise Parker. He was married to Mary Louise Parker. <laughs> And okay. I think he was dating Claire Danes at the time. That was, I don't know. I, there's three different names that came in there. and You know who any of them are? Yeah, I know yeah. Claire Danes. And you know, she was just on my flight a couple days ago, actually. No way. Yeah. How's she looking? Good. Yeah? Yeah. Claire Danes, my so-called life is a fucking, like I was, today I was trying to, I'm doing a, 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 a podcast called Drink Champs. You ever mm. listen to them? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's fucking the, uh, awesome. Like dude sitting around a table with yeah. all the alcohol on it. Yeah, yeah. And it's, it's do, you all... get, do you get fucked up on that? Oh, yeah, I will. I'm thinking about <laughs> I know. fucking taking an Adderall, but, like, but do first. People typically. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. yeah. DMX, fucking Jada Kiss. But you said you're gonna take an Adderall before. I was thinking everyone's on Adderall. I just Are found they? Out, I found out everyone's on Adderall. I found out everyone's on fucking Adderall. I don't know if you need Adderall. I, I don't. I don't think. But I, I just think wanna, you got a natural. Want to make sure I. Yeah, but um, so, but I was. I'm trying to. So today I was trying. I don't know. I, don't know I, I was trying to. I I was up. I woke up at one in the morning and stayed up until five. And so I was trying to use the time wisely, in a creative manner. And so I was trying to, uh, chronologically, tell my story of hip hop to myself. So like, what was the first hip hop album I bought? Mm -hmm. And then what what were the 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 big earmark moments in hip hop for me mm -hmm. like and then and then how did i how did i get to outcast how did i get to dmx like it's it's really an inter you know if you if you use music to tell the story of your life it really is a fun i was having fun doing it even though i was should have been sleeping is like jada kiss and and the locks and uh and and dipset that was introduced to me in the coolest way you could get introduced Growing up in the South, everything was car music. Everything you listened to was in your car. Mm. And 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 I didn't have a car in New York, so everything was headset music. So, but one of the coolest things was on a Sunday in New York, when it was a beautiful, when spring was happening, that music was all being played on this show called The Box. And you'd see it in your house, and then you'd hear it in the streets when people were driving around New York, like having a day, like in their convertible driving around and you just be like five hot black chicks listening to to Cameron mm -hmm. and you and but you'd hear it and you'd hear it once and then it was the song go around at the time then you'd hear it again and then you'd be like what the fuck is that song and you'd have to figure out what that song was and then go get it in a CD player that you listen to headsets and then that's how you you discover music in New York it was really cool when i was thinking of that and the reason i was saying this is that when i first moved to New York I met a dude. I didn't have a place to. I didn't have places to stay, and so I would, uh, I would get weed, and I'd meet dudes at bars, and then I'd say, "Hey, you want to you want to get high?" And they'd be like, "Yeah," and I'd be like, "Well, my roommate's a dick. Why don't we go to your place and get high?" And then we get high, and I pass it on their couch. So, like the second dude I met, maybe third dude I met, was uh, I'm sorry that I can't remember his name, 
but he lived with a guy named John Beamer. And I grew up with John Beamer. Uh, I, I went, I live, I grew up with John Beamer, went to high school together. And I went to this guy's house. I wish I could remember his name. I went to his house. We smoked weed. I fell asleep on his couch and he's like, I eh, just pass out here. I'll wake you up in the morning. And I fell asleep on his couch and John Beamer woke me up the next day and was like, what the fuck are you doing here? And I was like, Beamer? And I didn't know that it was his roommate. And I was like, shut the fuck up. I go, is this your apartment? He's like, yeah, going to work. What, what are you doing? I said, I moved to New York. And he's like, oh my God. He's like, well, let's hang out. Let's go do something. And then his roommate woke up and he's like, yeah, I don't have to work today. You want to hang out? And I was like, yeah. And he's like, you want to smoke weed and watch my so-called life? I was like, what's that? And he's like, it's so good. So me and this dude that I'd never met got high and ordered beers and just drank and got high and watched my so-called life the binge watched it and i'm talking like i was a meathead frat boy and i was like smitten i was like this is the coolest story wait this was all coming full circle back to claire danes claire danes was in my so-called life <laughs> I, 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 <laughs> I was like where the fuck are you going with this like i I was like, is he, what is he going to tie this back to? And it was it was just someone's name that I mentioned 15 Claire minutes Dains, ago. Claire Danes, I've got a special place in my heart for Claire Danes. Oh, wow. For the rest of my life. <laughs> I, when I think of Claire Danes, I think of that first. It was like the first time you were comfortable in an apartment where you're like, and then I moved into that apartment. I lived with that dude. I lived there. And this is a random dude you met at a bar? Yeah. That just got a bar. He's a music producer. I would love to know what he's doing now. Hit him up. I would love to know what he's doing now. The uh, no, I, I I'm sure John Beamer. John Beamer's a doctor now. I think John Beamer did stand up. I I stayed with John Beamer and I said, and I said I moved here to do stand up. He goes, I'm doing stand up. John Beamer was funny as fucking shit in high school, but he wasn't the funniest dude in the room. He was the funniest in the, dude in the room that you didn't know was the funniest dude in the room. Those are the funniest dudes. He's he was the funniest dude. The the the, the double take guys where you're like, oh, where the fuck did that come from? Yeah, you should talk more. Yeah. And so John Beamer said, uh, let me set you up with the open mic I'm doing. So, I'm, by the way, I just moved to New York. I've been there four days. He sets me up with the open mic that is the reason. It is the jumping off point for everything. I, the guy that booked that open mic that night <coughs> booked me in his sitcom. It was the first pilot I ever did. I mean, this is like you, a better, like, you know, your, your point of entry into a business. This was perfect for me. It was everything. And John Beamer and I signed up for Monday night open mic with David J. Nash. And I, John's like, what are you going to talk about on stage? I go, I don't know. I'll figure it out when I get on stage. He was like, I think you should write it. And I was like, ah, yeah, but I don't know how to do, write a joke. I know that if I'm on stage, I'm funny. And he was like, I, uh, I would definitely write it. And he goes, I've written mine. I've rehearsed it. It's exactly seven minutes. You should definitely do that. And I was like, and I started panicking. John Beamer got on stage and he jumped up and he goes, Hey, I've completely forgotten what I'm supposed to say. And the place erupted and he jumped off stage and, it? and then everyone went crazy. And then he jumped back on stage and he goes, has anyone seen the TV show friends? Hey, all right. And he jumped off stage and he totally froze. And he quit stand up and he moved out of New York the next week. <laughs> and that's right. how I got that apartment. And David J. Nash got on stage and he goes, I think we just saw the quickest career in show business in our lives. <laughs> and John Beamer sat next to me and my buddy Eddie. And my buddy Eddie goes, Hey, don't worry about it. Everyone has bad sets. And John goes, That was the worst set anyone's ever had in the history of comedy. And he goes, he goes Eddie says to John, John, if there's an upside, it can't get worse. And John looks at Eddie and goes, it's only going to get worse. And then he moved out of New York, and I got his apartment. Yeah. Wow. And now he's a doctor. He lives in Chicago. He's happily married. Sounds like it got better. It did get better. It did get better. He was a journalist. I think he was a medical journalist for a while. But to this day, funniest dude in the room. He was the funniest dude in the room. He said to me one time in college, in high school on the DL, someone's and i've i've this has stuck with me because i used this in one of my hours there was what we used to say back in the day we're gonna party hardy mm -hmm. and he goes i don't trust anyone who uses party as a verb or uses hardy as an adverb or whatever the right thing was to say mm -hmm. and i looked at him and i just laughed I, I was what it was like one of those word things and i was like oh good one john 
So, well, my next question was about to be before we start talking about this was like, is there anyone named John Beamer who's had a major impact on your life? So I'm glad you. <laughs> I'm glad you <laughs> walked me through that whole thing. Cause I was like, when I showed up here today, I was like, fuck, I wonder if there's anyone with the last name Beamer. So, think- so you haven't planned out your, what you're going to ha- like, you don't plan out conversations when you meet people. What do you mean? Like when I met, I got really nervous when I was meeting Snoop and I told Tommy. Oh, wait, are we circling back to, the to Will, Will Smith? Will Smith, Will Ferrell, Will Ferrell, Will Ferrell. Will Ferrell. Uh, no, well, I when I met at Sundance. He was the producer of the movie I did uh, mm, called the one, Theater Camp. That, the one that just came out. Yeah, that, well, it's coming out uh, July 14th. Really? In theaters, yeah. Jesus, so, how many could, fucking movies do you have coming out? A little handful. You got Strays, they got this one, and then Theater Camp, and then I'm shooting the Will Ferrell one, and then another one in July, which I'll Straight. be talking about soon. Really? But, I at Sundance, Will Ferrell was a producer on that movie. That's fucking awesome. So, but I I wouldn't be able to like. I feel like if I practice any kind of conversation leading up to talking to anyone, <clears throat> it would just come off like forced. I'd be like thinking like, how do I get to, how do I get to the thing I was gonna say? Uh, it's about you know I I was nervous when I met Snoop. I told Tom I was like, do you like? As I never I never met like a hero celebrity. Mm-hmm. Like hero celebrities are a little different than just like a celebrity. Yeah, like that's like Will Ferrell for me. Yeah, it's like a hero celebrity. So there's a certain things like, and that's why I think I practiced the thing with Adam Sandler and it went so wrong, mm-hmm. so wrong that I was like, I'm not, I told Tom, I was like, I'm not good at this. Like, I'm not good. And Tom's really good at meeting celebrities. He, I don't know. He just doesn't care. Yeah. He, like, he just is like. I've been, you know, I've been trying to get better at, I've been trying to get better when I really like respect and like look up to people. Yeah. I've been trying to get better at just like telling them. Because there's been so many occasions where I've been somewhere and someone has like come up to me and said like a really nice thing that I was like, oh, like I felt like uh, like when someone appreciates your work the way that you would like people to appreciate it, when someone yeah. comes up to you and says that, like just really quickly and politely and they just say like, hey man, like I've been watching you since I was a little kid and I really appreciate this, this and this. And you're just like, wow, that was fucking, that was really nice. Yeah. And it's made me, and I kind of like realized after like, like, it was like a couple years ago and I was like, I should do that more. I've done it to, I've been lucky enough to do it to a couple people recently. I did it to Conor McGregor. So I, Conor McGregor was like, you know, it's like people, uh, same with Claire Danes. I'll, I'll wait till I run into Claire Danes. I'm going to fucking light her up. You know what you said to me actually when we were shooting the movie that stuck with me was that like you love being a fan of things because it, it makes you feel like, um, I forget what, it, like how you said it, but you were talking about like the community of like, being a fan like you, you root like for people when you because then you know you like the same thing yeah i forget what how it's, how you said it well it's, a, it's the coolest thing the the coolest things especially when you have like little kids and you watch them become fans of things mm. and then you and then you watch them find their friends that have similar interests mm. it's a really vulnerable place to be but it 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 it's really fun like i, I i'm i'm certain i said to you it's fun, like when we found you, uh, like when we found you, it was it was fun, to because I was like I was like oh, and then I start watching you and other stuff, and then you know Liam was obsessed with fucking ub, obsessed with uh uh, uh guest book no no uh the fucking vandal no the, keep going real bros you see me valley <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> she was obsessed with it I mean she watched all of them yeah she watched all of them but it was fun to become a fan of someone's because then when they succeed. You feel like you succeed. You feel like right, you picked right. the right that one. That's what you said. Yeah. It's and it's a and it's and I, I I don't. I mean I I I I. That's where I I kind of gravitate is to the positive side of loving shit, trying to love shit. So like when you name all those people on Coachella, mm-hmm. I go, oh, I want to listen to them. Mm-hmm. I want to. I want to. I want to become a fan. It's fun to discover stuff, and 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 you also adversely find. Like I watched, my daughter Isla was really into anime, and she shared that with some people, and they made fun of her. And then you watched her go into a little bit of a cave of like, well, I guess you don't tell people what you like. Mm-hmm. And then you realize how shitty it is when you watch people, you know, sh- just shit on stuff just to fucking shit on it because they don't get it or they yeah. don't care. And you're like, oh fuck, man. Um, I, I, I when I when I met Connor, like Connor had a a real moment in my life when i was doing something i didn't want to be doing i was working for travel channel and mm-hmm. i was very grateful for the job but i did not want to be riding roller coasters i just thought it was i thought i was better than that i thought i had more to offer than ah! 
So, <laughs> which sadly, if you watch this movie, not much better. But, <laughs> but, uh, but, um, but I got to. Say, I, I, when he walked up, I didn't know what. To, I didn't practice it. I didn't know what to say. I didn't know he was going to be walking up to me. I thought I was meeting the general manager of the restaurant. I didn't know I was meeting him. And I was very, and I said, I, I just, and I've said this, I said this to someone the other day. I can't remember who I, I talked to. I met a celebrity like two days ago in Australia. Who did I meet in Australia? I just did this again. Hmm. Oh, no, 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 no. I met all my favorite fucking humans. I met, I went to the live golf tournament and I met Greg Norman. Hmm. And I was like, I was like, it's hard to express to someone how much time you've spent enjoying them mm -hmm. and like really enjoying them and i i said it to, well i said it's a style better a hundred percent but uh i said it to, to connor i said you have no idea how many nights he was the thing i looked forward to uh, that you're on the road you're in fucking sandusky ohio and you know that buffalo wild wings is playing the mcgregor fucking jose aldo fight or whatever and so you're like guys fuck work we got something to do tonight mm -hmm. like we got something to do my day of work is now eventized by this one thing and i got i can get through this work because all we're talking about is what we're doing tonight so work's done thank you for this great day connor that all the fucking preparation you put in to this fight all the nerves that must have gone in all the di the weight you had to cut all the training camp all the hard work to get here mm -hmm. all the negotiations you gave me one day, one Thursday, one Friday night, one Saturday, where I had to ride roller coasters all day and I didn't want to do it. But I knew that at the end of the day, I got to do the Buffalo Wild Wings Challenge, eat fucking curly fries, drink cold beer, and watch you fight. Like, it's like, it's fun for that. And like Greg Norman, I met Greg Norman. I can't, I couldn't express to him enough. I wish I had practiced it a little bit because it came out really quick. And I sometimes I say the wrong things, but it was like, my dad and I have talked about Greg Norman so fucking much. We have watched Greg Norman play golf so much. My dad and I connect with watching people play golf that I go, it's nice to take a moment and say, dude, just, you've been an inspiration. You've been like, thank you. I really enjoyed you. Like Seth Rogen, I don't, I don't know if I'll ever meet him. And he's younger than me, so it's a little creepy. But that guy, yeah. has him doing what he's done has brought me so much joy. Just on like, I, I got to do it with Nick Swartzen. You know Nick Swartzen? Yeah, of course. Yeah. I got to do Grown it. Ups next. too, baby. Dude, he wrote a movie called Malibu's Most Wanted. Oh, dude. I actually recently watched that. I, I, re, I did a rewatch. I, I mean, that was, you know, I was growing up in LA and, you know, yeah. like, you, you were like, this is fucking hilarious. Like, that was, I, when I was a kid, I was like, I thought that movie was so fucking funny. It's so funny. It's, it wasn't as funny when I watched it recently as it was when I was 12, but it was still pretty funny. I saw it at 27, 28, mm -hmm. whenever it was, and I, I got the opportunity, which was the first time this ever happened to me, where I was sitting in a hotel room in Albuquerque, New Mexico. It was, a, it was more like a motel room, and I was depressed. I had not made it on Last Comic Standing. I did not. I was doing stand-up. I wasn't finding like humor in it because I feel like I was a failure because I didn't make it on Last Comic, and... That movie came on and it pulled me out of my little fucking head and I giggled for like fucking two hours. And I called Nick and I was like, dude, I don't know what your intent was when you wrote this movie, but you need to know you succeeded because I fucking laughed my dick off. Yeah. And that's the cool thing is like, I'm sure Seth Rogen's main goal wasn't to like help a dude on the road. Fucking... No, it's to make people laugh. But when they give you the context and why it was meaningful, it's... It's uh, it's just nice. It's, yeah. it's it's a nice. Like I, I met some I met some dude that literally did my favorite Coachella show I've ever seen. Who? And, uh, it's this band called Odessa, and they did this performance at Coachella like a few years ago with this drone light show, and it was just like, and I and like my friend was like, this is he's in Odessa, and I was like, dude, I just want to tell you, like your show in when I, like whatever that was. I reference that all the time as like a feeling that I'm always trying to replicate when you're at a show and all you can do is just stand there like this and just soak it in and thank you. And he's like, oh, dude, fuck yeah. That's and the I was best. Just like, and it made me, I felt so good to be able to tell that to him. Like the guy that brought you, the people that bring you so much joy to be able to tell you, to tell them, thank you. And for, have them for receive that. it. That's the thing yeah. that like, 
that sadly none of these, very few of the people will ever hear this. Hopefully this will get to Seth Rogen and and, and he'll hear this. I, that's my dream is this gets Seth Rogen because he needs to understand and I'm sure he does, but like don't trivialize those moments. Those moments may bother you in a taco shop, mm. but l- allow those people that you've given joy to, mm. allow them to celebrate you because that is the that is like I got to do it with Jeff Tweedy, and I didn't want to do it because I was wor- nervous. I know Jeff Tweedy is he's from a band called Wilco that mm. you definitely probably have never heard of. No, I haven't. And so, <laughs> and so, I went to his show at Red Rocks the night after I did Red Rocks with him. I did it with Jimmy Buffett. I did it with Jimmy Buffett the 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 year before, and I mean. Jimmy Buffett, both of them didn't let me down, but I was nervous with Jeff Tweedy because I know he's an artist. So, like, sometimes artists don't, don't want the praise, you know? Yeah. They're very deflecting. Well, yeah, I mean, but it's not about, like, how they receive it. It's more just, just being able to say it and then just get out of there. I've had, I had, I've had the worst of, I was in Atlantic City and a fucking mobster guy was like, hey, uh, my girl's going to come over here. Just take your shirt off. And I was like, oh, I think I'm going to keep it on. He goes, no, nah, you're not. You're going to keep taking it off. That's your fucking thing. Take the fucking shirt off, yeah. funny boy. And I was like, hey, man, you're not making me feel like a human right now. Like yeah. And he was like, I don't give a fuck. Yeah. I pay money to see your fucking show. My girl's coming over. You take your fucking shirt off. You understand me? And now I'm like, oh, wow, this this doesn't feel good. Yeah. Yeah, this feels like. Yeah, next thing you know, you're fighting your fans. <sighs> Crazy. Yeah, what were you going to say? Dressed as a bumblebee. Yeah. So when are you gonna come back and do my podcast? I'm not done talking to you, but we should wrap it up. Is this not your podcast? Were we just fucking no, hanging out no. with microphones? <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck have we been doing this whole time? No. When are you gonna come back? I want I want you to do it again. Uh, when I'll, are you back? You, I'll you be good? back in. Uh, be back in. Uh... So let's let's talk about real quick. How are you gonna bring my name up to Will Ferrell just casually? <sighs> like like uh, so. Uh, I'll be Will. I'll be Will, and you mm-hmm. be Jimmy. Okay. Okay. Ah, so glad to have you here, Jimmy. Where you're? Uh, how's everything going? Are you doing any projects you're really excited about? Yeah, um, dude. Actually, funny thing. Do you know anyone named John Beamer? <laughs> <laughs> I love you, buddy. I love you, man. I love you, man. <laughs>